I, I don't know if it was actually a focus group. It was just a couple of us in uh, my friend uncle's basement. <laughs> <laughs> It was real dark. <laughs> it was real dark. <laughs> kind of dank. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinemas. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined as always by Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. And Danae Hughes. <laughs> We write for Cinema Sins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. Danae going with the uh, ninja sounds. Yes. Is that in honor of the Zombieland uh, video? Uh, Nope. It just popped into my head, so I did it, <laughs> which is most of the time what I do. Fair enough. Uh, how is everybody? Everybody doing good? Good. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. All right. Nothing to talk about then. <laughs> Last week, we spent five hours talking about right, right. <laughs> moving. Hey, which was kind of cool, though, because we got a lot of feedback on Twitter about so many BTS fans that are also in the process of moving or buying a home. Yeah. So that seems to be like a yeah, thing right and, now. Uh, apparently, uh, the Sif Pop website pays well because... I saw that Blake just bought a house, so... <laughs> yeah. Guess I should have applied for that damn job. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. Sorry, mm-hmm. the managing editor job is already taken, and uh, boy, he's rolling in the dough from that, I'll tell you, <laughs> tell you that. Uh, yeah, including my son's moving, yeah. uh, which is an interesting time. It's uh, weird. It, like, everything is moving. Yeah. It's like the earth is moving, and like... <laughs> or is it? <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know the the motion paradox? Or like, have you, have you the heard this? The universe is moving. You know. Is it your Madison impersonation? Or are we just <laughs> doing all Zombie Land references? Slowly apart. <laughs> Uh, the motion paradox. BTS science. The motion paradox says that there is no such thing as movement. Uh, that technically, because you know everything is in a place at a given time, that mm-hmm. the only reason we perceive movement is because we perceive time. Whoa. So or maybe the Earth revolves around each of us. Yeah. Like you know, what is it's like a child psychology. Like there's that stage of development mm-hmm. where the kid believes that everything revolves around them. So yeah. because I can perceive time. I can see you moving. Yeah. And such bullshit. <laughs> so I never actually leave Sounds my house. Cool. <laughs> which is like my life's dream. I, I, I just question that because like think about my child who is three. She can't perceive time. Sure she can. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> If I say in five minutes, she's super confused. Actually, I didn't no, say she no, can perceive she, it well. She but... actually can perceive time really, really well. One of the paradoxes that goes along with this is the idea of you'll never uh, get to a place if you only go halfway every time, and you could go halfway forever and never get there. So, you know, if you can continue to move infinitely and never arrive somewhere, does motion really exist? I just, I have a quick question for you. <laughs> yes. How do you remember all of this? Stuff? I don't know. It's, it's, it's Where stuff, is this it's, in this your stuff, brain that you access this? This stuff activates me, man. I love. I remember reading a book um, called The Eternal Braid, and it was about uh, the mathematician uh, Godel, uh, Bach, the musician, and Escher, uh, the painter, and how all three of them in their different fields would play with paradoxes and times and how Bach would compose symphonies that were um, beautiful if you played them right side up and upside down. Um, I think you could start to add maybe Christopher Nolan on the movie side of this. Like the idea that, you know, you play with the form in ways that is, you know, mathematically interesting and Mm -hmm. paradoxical and all that kind of stuff. So Cool, cool, yeah. (laughs) Word, man. (laughs) <laughs> Anyhow, I still have that Escher book. Escher is my favorite painter, by the way. He's great in the way he mm-hmm. plays with, you know, like the the always ascending stairs. You know, the idea mm-hmm. of these paradoxes, but you can see them, but they yeah. can't exist in real life. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> by, by the way, Danae, that perception of time that your daughter has so well, that goes away. <laughs> um, wait till she's like six or seven and you tell her she's got to be ready in 10 minutes. Oh, see how no. that goes for you. Yeah. Great. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good news. You don't have to because time is an illusion. Just Tell That's her right. two hours before. Wait, wait, wait. So if I just move halfway towards her next birthday. Uh-huh. Never get to her birthday. I'll never get to her birthday. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. But, like, the rest of the world will get to her birthday because they're moving towards it? Uh, wait, you, wait, wait, wait. You can never get somewhere because you you have to move halfway first, so you will never get there. You know, this is like... um. A procrastinator's dream, right? <laughs> no, because you're always doing something. Like the procrastinator would just stand there. Yeah, you wouldn't even go halfway. Nothing makes sense anymore, man. No, no, it's all. And this is the perfect place to just move into our show. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to talk about this inside scoop? Yeah. All right, let's do it. What's he building in there? Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. 
We're going to take a look at the uh, videos from the CinemaSins week and the process of sending them, how we feel about the stuff we're sending in general. Uh, we will start with TV Sins. Uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, is this our last Breaking Bad in this Breaking Bad run? I think so. Yeah, I think it might be. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Wait. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Crawl Space. This was a Dicer Watkins <laughs> script. Uh, Jonathan and I writing on this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, this is an in, was an interesting episode to go back to for me because I remember loving this episode. Uh, and I had forgotten how much of my love for this episode was based on the last 10 minutes of this episode. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't feel as bad now because this was the first time I watched this episode and I really didn't like it. Well, it's like it's been one of my least favorite breaking bad episodes well it's so boring for it's such a slow start now listen breaking bad being slow is not new like that's definitely Mm -hmm. a a staple of vince gilligan but there's i think what happens is he builds to this place by the the end or the end builds to this place where i think it just changed the way i thought about the episode Mm -hmm. uh, because cranston is so incredible at the end and it's kind of this you know, another one of this transformative moments for the character. And it's just, it's an incredible ending. I had forgotten how much nonsense is in, you know, just all that IRS stuff with Ted. And, mm-hmm. oh, it's just. Well, everything's very contrived. Even like him and Hank being on stakeouts. Yeah. And even the, like the confrontation with Jesse. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Tell is... me what's going on in this episode. Tell me all the things. Well, I I mean, I think we we kind of have right. Like yeah. we talk about the you know the stakeouts that they're doing the you know. So uh, this Skyler. is when they're coming. They're getting closer to catching Walt. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. I mean, yes, it, he's he's kind of almost at full villain at this point. Okay. Um. So I guess I guess because I like um you know I like to research all the different things, but mm-hmm. then I'm not on Breaking Bad. I just I want you to give me all the information. Well, there's a. I mean, we have all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we we actually don't. I think actually, and one thing real quick, I think Skyler's transformation on this show is almost as interesting, yeah, as Cranston's. She, yes, she kind Walt's. of embraces it, right? She does, and she's at that point yeah. right now, and embraces it is maybe too strong a word because yeah. of of them in that couple. She maintains her humanity. She tries to find a way, but she to... still does a little deviant stuff. Oh yeah, no, you know? but it's generally you know like deception for money for keeping the secret, you know mm-hmm. those kind of things. She, you know, she never straight up murders anybody like right. uh, mm-hmm. Walt does. Right, I guess that's true. She doesn't cross that line. Right. So, so yeah. She I is, mean, not that I know because I haven't seen the whole thing. You know, and even even in her, you know, regards to Ted and trying to get him to, because what's happened is Ted uh, has <laughs> messed what? things up. <laughs> I'm just so glad we had that sin about Ted. Ted is awful. He's the worst. <laughs> Ted is the worst. Uh, so he's messed things up because he has uh, taken this money that now they have to account for. And so if he doesn't pay his taxes, he's going to get, you know, investigated and it's going to come eventually come back to this money that came from, you know, Skyler and, and Walt. Right. Dr- and so she's, drug money or whatever. she's trying to force him to pay taxes. Meanwhile, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, Jonathan, but I, I think he has this huge crush on Skyler and yes. wants mm-hmm. something there. Yes. And mm-hmm. so even in that respect, Skyler is still maintaining her humanity to go to not use that against ted right like well, she's... i think she doesn't she end up like hooking up with them a little bit because i i think i just remember in one of my bunny trails of research just about the characters on their wiki page and stuff i remember mm-hmm. that she ends up having an affair with him i thought she was having and... an affair with him at first though oh okay i thought it was before this I, it might be. Yeah, it she, might be. Yeah, yeah. She because she does it right around the time that he confesses to her about what he's doing. Gotcha. Right. And then, like, the, basically during the period where we send fly. But but uh, I guess I saw that as more of like she wanted to have an affair with this guy. It wasn't right. like she was using yeah. his, like her. I, and I think is it that maybe at this point, whenever he's not doing what he should be doing with the money, that they decide to like she did. She kind of leaves him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, I think that's right. Basically, like thinking you're just as risky as anyone else. Like you're not being right. smart, right? And I can't be near you because you're not being smart. Yeah, okay. I think that's right. Okay. Anyhow, um, that whole thing is is kind of a slog to get through. I do like uh, Hubel and the and Bill Burr, you know, kind of character. <laughs> yeah, Bill Burr's great. Um, I you know I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Saul is getting more and more involved in the plot by now. Uh, so yeah, all that, all that stuff is interesting 
like big picture, but small picture in this episode, it just it takes forever to get there. Yeah, that's yeah, how it I feels totally on the show a, a lot of times. <laughs> well, Danae, what did you think about the the video since uh, Jonathan and I wrote on it? I am oddly excited to see it because, again, I like to know what the progression of the show is, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really solve a lot for me. It still leaves me with questions about things. So I think after this little run, I'm probably going to do my crazy deep dive, which I'm doing on a show that we're going to be sending soon. Um, I went on a insane frenzy deep dive. Yeah, it's going to be a fun episode. Is this what you were... uh talking to me about last night nope that's the next one (laughs) i have four scripts due this week so i'm a little bit Mm -hmm. crazy um i have to be careful how much research i decide to do at least least it's not the week directly before a big fan event or something no or the the week that i maybe (laughs) fracture my foot or right yeah at least there's nothing else (laughs) going on my husband's recovering from minor surgery both selling and buying a new house packing up a home none of that's going on yeah at least you don't have any of that stuff so I, I really have to be careful not to go down too many rabbit trails. Mm-hmm. And Breaking Bad is one of those where I'm sort of like, um, I'm okay holding off my frenzy a little bit. So I like watching the videos because then, of course, I get to kind of see quickly see what's going on. Anything um, stand out to you on this one? Mm, I mean, it's the it's a great video. You guys did a great job. Thanks. But um, I stopped watching it halfway through. <laughs> so can you tell me about what the crawl space is? <laughs> You didn't watch the best part. No, I know. Yeah, that's, that's the very I'm sorry. end. Listen, listen, I'm a busy girl. That's <laughs> when he finds out. That's where he has his money, and that's when he he finds out that Skyler gave Ted money. Okay. He didn't know Skyler had given Ted money, and then he needed that money for something else that's to, for them to escape. I remember that, yes. So. And she took it, so then he's, he's in bad shape. Yeah. Because he goes through the crawl space, and it's not there. Right. <gasps> Yeah. yeah. See, I knew that and happened. And he just laughs like the Joker. And oh, yeah, no. and the last the last shot is like this no, pullback from the the him laying in the crawl space, and you see him through the like the hatch that goes down to the crawl space, and mm-hmm. it just pulls back as he's just losing his mind, and it is. Some of the most incredible television I've ever seen. All right, I'll go on. <laughs> we just we just took off three cents. Yeah, we didn't, like, even, we say didn't even say anything. We didn't even say anything. It just took off three cents. Dang it! I'm sorry, I didn't watch it. That no, sounds no, no. really good. No, it's it's yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. I, I think it's a testament to how good the end of that episode is, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. Um, yeah, the Joker thing was fascinating to me when I was watching this because he really is doing kind of the same thing that Joaquin's doing in the Joker movie, right? Where it's <laughs> a like little bit, yeah, coughing and laughing at the same time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, does his can- Cancer return? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, Very much so. Yeah, and uh, and so yeah, I enjoyed it. What were some of the stuff that uh, that you pulled out of the video, Jonathan? That you like? I mean, we've we talked about some of it already. I just like we were pointing out like the the weirdness with like you know Walt and Hank, like Hank actually having Walt drive him on stakeouts. Yeah. I mean, I know there is a little more to that in the show, but it's still, it still it seems a little silly when you pull back and uh, look at it. Uh, the idea that Hank doesn't know what's going on with Walt, even though Walt asks him all those questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you What did you write? It was like an ob- oblivious tiv. Yes. <laughs> yes. Instead of a detective. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And um, and we mentioned the Ted thing. Um, the carpet shadowing was very great. Um, and then I just I, I was I was I mean I love the previously on too. It doesn't have to do with the video specific, but I love the previously on we used from The Walking Dead with the I'm Mary Poppin jaw. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good. I always like in a foreshadowing sin when you can actually rhyme foreshadowing. So to do <laughs> yeah. to do floor shadowing, I thought was was a you know a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's of fun. what I meant. Floor shadowing. Um, the one that somebody mentioned in the comments, and this is another thing I love when you uh, make a reference, and it's subtle enough that people are like, "Did you mean to do? Like, was that intended or yeah. not?" And mm-hmm. the thing with Fring saying, we'll keep an eye out for it. Um, you know, <laughs> there were a couple of comments like, did you mean to say keep an eye out because his eyes hanging out of his skull when he dies later? I was like, yeah, yes. that was absolutely 100% uh, yeah, it's intentional. Like the, it's like the bat with a uh, Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, so I enjoyed that. God, Giancarlo Esposito is so good on this show, He's so too. Great. Talk about uh, just an underused actor. Yeah, yeah, he's really great. I've actually great. met him, too. He is super cool. Like, yeah. He's just as super cool as you would think he would be. Uh, the other thing I would mention is don't make your checks out to the IRS. Uh, just a little uh, little public service announcement from uh, CinemaSins. <laughs> yeah, that was very much a, like we're just yeah we're just gonna be really annoying and <laughs> what? point this out. I thought that was great. 
Uh, yeah, it's. It, I mean, people think you would do that, but it's actually you make it out to the treasury, um, not the IRS. But they kept saying in this episode, just make the check out to the inter- Internal Revenue Service, and mm-hmm. like that check will not work. No, <laughs> and, and listen, you're going to be in a bigger. You're going to have a bigger issue. That's right. And if you get a call saying that you're behind on your IRS, and and it sounds like this, hello, you have been reached by. Oh, you are uh, past due on your. <laughs> IRS, the government is after you. You must press one. No, don't. That's not real. No, it's not real. I'm so sad that people like I get those emails almost every day that my Amazon account or my my Apple account has been like, yeah, the phishing emails blocked. Yeah. And I mean, it's like every day. And I'm just like, you know, people click on that. And And my my grandmother was called terrible uh, called one time by a scammer. And she had thankfully been watching the news. They were updating mm. some of the scams that were really active. But it was somebody pretending to be her grandson saying mm. that he needed help to get out of jail. Uh, let me just tell you, so. we don't have enough hours in the day for me to tell you the stories being married to somebody who's in banking oh, uh, yeah. of how people are tricked. And I sometimes was... there's a line. Sometimes there's a line where I'm like, I'm not sorry for him anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, my wife will tell me stories of people, you know, being tricked and coming in and saying, I need to get this amount of cash out for this reason. The people at the bank know this is a scam and say, this is a scam. And they still like, you know, want to do it. And sometimes they, I I forget exactly how the ins and outs work sometimes, but they have to get really, Mm -hmm. you know, belligerent almost with their customers sometimes because that's going to cost the bank money. Yeah. If that money goes away and then so i it's it's crazy what people will believe and well and it's not easy the bank doesn't always cover it like i was scammed recently and the bank didn't cover it right and it was a lot of money yeah so and it's and it was recent where i was like i can't believe that i fell for that but i did and so 1800 bucks yeah boom gone just oh like no that. that's terrible because mm-hmm. there's really clever ways to get scammed and no they're definitely and is. i'm fucking smart my brain is i mean yeah i know words and everything <laughs> <laughs> but but uh their whole their whole system is built on trying to find those little cracks in the in the foundation so yeah yeah that's wild yeah well i think the thing i mean and i think most people that probably listen to us know this but the the thing about the emails specifically is just never click on a link I, mine was um, actually an email. Always just go to the site itself and make sure everything's cool. Mine was but. an email. It came when I was working at a job recently. I was brand new to the job and um, it came through from mm-hmm. my boss. Uh, and I was using a different, huh. I was using an Apple computer, which I have never used before. And so all of the, all the information I'm looking at is in a different place. And so I didn't, I just didn't see the signs, the warning signs, because it was all coming to me differently. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of circumstances that kind of led to this Who moment. Was it? Somebody was just in the news that got scammed because, oh, it, you know, Shark Tank, mm-hmm. you know, Barbara on Shark yeah. Tank. Mm-hmm. She just oh, yeah. lost like hundreds of thousands of dollars with that exact yep. same scam because her assistance, it was so close to her assistance email yep. that she didn't even. Was it about gift cards for eBay? <laughs> I don't think it was. It was probably something bigger than that. That's what mine but... was. But, and, and that's the thing. I mean, they just, they just, you know, they continuously go at you just assuming somebody's going to accidentally click on something. It was, and, it, it was, and um, they always do. It was just the words, um, uh, I need you to run an errand for me. How fast can you do it? And it was from my boss. Yeah. And I was like, I can do it right now. And then reply back, great. Go to Walgreens or CVS, buy several, uh, buy gift certificates. Wow. And we had an event coming up and the verbiage was even about for someone, like it was for Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown or something. And I'm new, so I didn't know. I didn't know anything. And so then I text my boss, I'm on my way. And she's like, okay, not knowing what, that it was unrelated. Oh, that's, that's bad. And so how do you text back? Okay. Do I'm on my way when you don't know what that is? I don't know if it was directly on my way. I was, I was like, um, oh, oh, because we had a meeting in 15 minutes. Uh. We had a meeting. So it was, I mean, the, 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 the everything is everything, conspiring against you. I sent you. her a picture of me at the Walgreens so that she knows that I'm running the errand she wanted me to. And I said, I'll still be on time for the meeting, but here I am. Because this email I'm getting is so quick. Gotta uh-huh. do it now kind of a thing. So I get out my credit card and I buy all these gift cards. And the instructions are to scratch off the back and send the pictures. So I did. Wow. And then, oh, no. and, the, and the, the story gets even crazier after that. I called eBay. They said that they put a freeze on all of them so they could return the money. But then they didn't actually do that. 
And so in that 15 minute window of me realizing I had been scammed, calling eBay, getting them frozen and everything like that, they had already used them all. Oh, wow. So then I had to like go to the federal government and try to give all that information. All that to say, had I clicked on it and read the email address, I would have known. Uh, because the email address wasn't my boss. So sorry. It was Michelle something blah, 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 like this weird, of course, yeah. spam thing. But I didn't know to click on it. So yeah, don't click on links, but also look at the w- where the email is from. Absolutely. So, uh, but how do they like? How do they like? I have so many questions. Oh like, <laughs> well, and I still, had they gotten into her account somehow? And I think what it was is you know there's business uh, uh, websites. And they can see the staff members of who works there. Like if somebody mm-hmm. went to our website or something and they saw CinemaSins, they might be able to easily assume that in order to reach Aaron, it's Aaron at CinemaSins.com. And so scammers right. will will go in and they'll try to figure out a way to manufacture an email. Yeah, if spoof you, an email. If you look at where it's the actual address, it's not the actual address of your boss, but the title of it can they can make it the title mm-hmm. look like yeah they can it. spoof it so anyway, wow sorry if these, to... if, no no if these if, if these people would just go get like a degree and something and then just apply to like the fbi or can you imagine <laughs> like how beneficial they could actually be i actually kept texting the guy back and forth because we were we That's were crazy. conversing via text message it wasn't all email at that point in time because i had texted mr brown all of the mm-hmm. information so i still have those text messages on my phone um just in case the government ever decides to step in and get involved but i you know the bank couldn't really do much for me and wow isn't that crazy that is the worst my my fake uh, psa turned into a real psa it's a real psa you gotta be careful (laughs) that works just fine gotta be careful uh all right let's move on to how i met your mother uh we did the pilot of this episode this was a dicer hughes script today and i wrote on this one um what did you think today about this do you watch how i met your mother no i've never watched it jonathan do you watch the show yeah i've seen every episode oh. uh, many of them multiple times so it was a favorite of my wife and i's what did you think of the, what, how'd you think of us sinning it yeah i was were gonna you, say you, I, you, you, I mean i i couldn't really tell like because i mean my perspective is this like i think that for instance i think that barney is is a really is like a classic sitcom character and I think Neil Patrick Harris does a great job uh, with that role. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still probably would have written Sins the way you guys did, if that makes sense. Oh, that's sense. cool. Yeah. Because I just, cause my, my take is the narrator doesn't like anything. So right. I would try to find the, I would try to find that, you know, the, the, the annoying aspects of the character. Um, but at the same time, I still really think he's really funny in that role. Well, Neil Patrick Harris is great. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Like, and that's the, my thing about this show, just watching the first episode, I actually like the conceit. I like the twist at the mm-hmm. end. Uh, and I love the cast. I think the cast is, is great. Um, yeah, that, that's one of the best things about it is that cast. And so I feel like you're already dealing with a lot of things going for you. So mm-hmm. the fact that the episode still was kind of, gr- you know, groan worthy and didn't always work for me was like, wow, even with all that going for you, I still didn't have a lot of personal incentive to continue watching the show same i still think the pilot holds up pretty well though there's a lot of it maybe it's just because i've watched the show but there's just so many like nice moments in it mm-hmm. um I, the stuff with the blue the blue uh the blue trombone or trumpet or whatever french horn, french horn. the french horn yeah the french horn thank you um mm-hmm. uh suit up you know for was said for the first time and, and uh, marshall and lily are one of my all-time favorite tv couples yeah, they're quirky. Yeah. Uh, there's, and, and Allison Hannigan and, and Jason um, Siegel. Siegel are just, they have so much chemistry. Yeah. Um, it's really funny. Allison Hannigan's actual husband uh, it becomes, a, becomes a character on, is like a character on the show oh, later nice. on. Um, plays actually one of Robin's boyfriends, I guess. But um, no, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the cast and their chemistry. The show really started to piss a lot of people off toward the end. My wife and I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, just the way they, the way they divulge the mother, like, like they could have, what they probably should have done um, is had the mother pop up with like two seasons left. Cause there's no reason we couldn't have seen, you know, 
him with the mom early on. Or well, whatever. unless they didn't have a plan, you know. Yeah, I, well, which that's, is kind of what probably I part think. Of it. Yeah, that's kind of what but I even think. Even so, like the final season um, is really interesting. I think it's the final season, or maybe it's yeah, it is the final season where the whole season takes place at a wedding. Like every episode is at this wedding, and uh, it's it's a really cool like experiment. You know, the writers get to play around with a lot of things, and yeah. uh, it's you know it's a lot of fun. But uh, but I, I can see why it annoyed people at the end. I just love these characters so much at that point. I just didn't care anymore. Yeah, I've heard, and even in the comments, people were talking about the ending, and <clears throat> it sounds, in I guess, spoilers for the end of How I Met Your Mother, but, I mean, if you're listening to this show, you know spoilers for everything. Duh. Um, so, but uh, apparently it ends with him actually getting together with her, her with Aunt whatever. Hilda. R- yeah, Robin his, or his whatever. Wife, his wife dies. <laughs> because his wife dies, and people were like, well, you know. So does that, if if we had known that, are there different things we could have seen in this episode that don't make sense with that? That's what I wonder. Oh, no, you know? I don't think no, so. No, I don't no, think so. I mean, and you guys even talk about how great that, cl- that, that end of the episode it is. It really is. Because I, I even looked yeah. up this information Mm because i remember people talking about this show a little bit you know um and that and uh that you don't really find out that was a great mystery like the whole title of the show they never tell you until Mm -hmm. the show ends and i remember people being disappointed in it and i've been so i never really had a a desire to to watch it my wife and i my i remember my wife really liked the finale um I liked parts of it. I the thing at the the only thing about it was it felt really rushed. Like once again, I just feel like if we had known the mom better, it might have felt a little more genuine. But it yeah. just like basically by the time you meet her and she becomes his wife, she dies. Like as I mean, they're together for a while because they have these two children. I think the ridiculous. But, but what we see, we've only see her for like thirty minutes, which would be ridiculous because the kids, you know. I don't know. I just feel like the kids would have known that part of their story. They're like teenagers now. So it just feels kind of weird. But anyway, I mean, I didn't. Oh, well, no, no. What happens is he hasn't gotten together with Robin yet, though, at that point when he's telling him, like, basically, at the, if you guys want to know, I guess you guys already know, at the end of, like, he says, so that's how I met your mother and so on. And then they're like, you know, Dad, we know you want to be with Aunt Robin. It's been a while since I've seen it, but he basically gets together with Aunt Robin after that. Meanwhile, these children are aging on the couch and look like forty-year-olds. <laughs> well, well, they actually they they don't show them as much later on, but I, they they filmed a few things with them um, early on, so they don't age. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, they filmed they filmed everything with them like in the first couple of seasons because the girl is actually um, she was on the show Nikita. She she's actually been in quite a few things. I can't think of the actress's name now. Interesting. But, um, yeah, they picked kids that looked exactly like them so yeah anyway yeah yeah, that's yeah true. I, but they did they did film a couple things early on so they didn't have to and then you guys also talked about um him telling the story to them and like he says like smurf penis and <laughs> but what's funny i love that you guys brought that up because what's funny is in other episodes he actually they get jokes out of him covering up what things he's talking about like he calls them different things because he's talking to kids right but yeah. then in some episodes he just says smurf penis yeah and there's he a also lot of that. tells them all about barney yes. yeah yeah, exactly. His many exploits. Right. I, I can it's see. Kind of, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I can see why this show would be something that would be interesting to watch, especially if you like watch mm-hmm. the pilot. And then, of course, you're of course, you're intrigued to continue to watch the next episode and then maybe yeah. you fall in love with the characters. But it, for me, I didn't. I think, like you said, the uh, Barney and um, what was her name? Uh, no, not not Barney. The uh, Marshall and Lily. Yeah, Marshall and Lily, I think, were the two that I was most interested to kind of watch because they were quirky and. Mm-hmm. And and um, uh, delightfully honest with each other, willing to talk about fears, but also stay true to each other. Like there was just, there was something that was really heartwarming about their relationship that I would mm-hmm. definitely watch. But I don't know that I would watch the rest of it. Barney annoyed me to no end. I didn't like that guy. Yeah, there are two parts. <laughs> I think that would grow on. I think he would grow on. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah, think he just like doesn't a, age well. Like a you know? mold. He just grows. No, but he, but he gets yeah. better on. Like he grows on the mold. show is what I'm saying. Like that really dangerous mold that makes mm-hmm. you move like, out of your I'll house. I'll tell you this. Like they have a whole like because I didn't know how much you guys knew about the show and. I didn't know if you were going to want to watch it, but like, for instance, him and Robin end up having a relationship. Of right, course, of they, course do, they do because it's a sitcom. It, but, but, mm-hmm. but it's actually it's really interesting. Yeah, it it, it just has like they actually work together really well. It's I don't know. 
It has the two things that make it very hard for me to get into a sitcom. One is the side character that's an absolute jerk and is, you know, hard for me to laugh at. And the other is... That they uh, live up upstairs from a bar <laughs> <laughs> no. or a coffee shop. The other is just how fake the, the laughter is. Like, oh, those yeah. Two, I just, oh, it's yeah. so hard for me to get into shows yeah. because of that. Other than that, like like I said, this has a lot going for it and it doesn't and it, surprise me. It was fun to sin. I yeah. actually had a fun time on this so let, one. Yeah, let's transition into that and Jonathan will let you start uh, since Danae okay. and I wrote on it. What are some of the things you liked from the video? Yeah, I mean, I talked about a couple of things you guys touched on. Uh, the aristocrats joke caught me completely off guard. <laughs> Did you write that, Aaron? I think that was an ad from The Shadow. I think that was a... Uh... Uh, Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and it's a perfect joke. It's a great joke. Oh, it's brilliant. I I didn't even I forgot about that. Wait, which one is this? The... So uh, he says Bob Saget is not telling the aristoc- aristocrat uh, aristocrats joke in this scene. Oh, okay. If you don't know what that is, uh-uh. uh, basically the aristocrats joke is a joke that comedians tell each other, and it gives them liberty to say the most f- vile, foul things their brains can come up with. And then the punchline is the aristocrats, everyone. Like you know, that's yeah. it's okay. been this running joke between comedians a for a long time. There's a whole documentary it. about oh, okay, okay. it, yeah. Okay. Uh, that I think Penn Gillette did, um, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, then, well done. I, I mean, I know that Bob Saget is actually kind of a, you know, raunchy dude. Well, he gives the most foul version of that joke in the movie. I think in the documentary, like, he really goes for it. Uh, and so, it, it, yeah, so that's that's kind of why that joke works so I, well. I still remember when, because I was, like, the right age for Full House, basically, and I remember... He did a comedy special like on HBO that my mom and I watched because, you know, I was a fan of Full House. And I just remember being like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I think I, Ted is not the dad. From he Full cusses. House, he's know? not the right. He's not the same person from the movie, <laughs> the TV show. Uh, local law enforcement. Thank that you. was Hello Aaron. Law. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciated the milk needs to be put away, son. That very was Danae. Much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, going to Orlando felt like I was being trolled. But I thought that was really funny. <laughs> I did think of you when I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, obscure lines from Ghostbusters was great. I I, I I quote that movie constantly. I, so that was just. I, I, that was one of the things that stood out to me the most being mm-hmm. around people and sort of being a person that does speak movie quote is how false that felt like because oh yeah for first, sure first of all it wasn't that obscure line from Ghostbusters oh sure yeah everybody knows <laughs> lines from movies <laughs> but secondly she just says it out of thin air it doesn't even like you don't even see how it applies to their conversation or anything yeah. it's just yeah. like I don't know that one bothered me but yeah good stuff funny. what about you Danae Great video. Um, I the the new record of how we quickly we got to roll commercials. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. Ten seconds is the new record. <laughs> I, I if there is somebody updating any kind of win, uh, fan wiki. Win yeah, wiki. right. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the first line of the show. Yeah. Um. I also liked the uh the swipes, freeze frames, whooshes, split screens, and somebody has the extra gene. <laughs> Nicely because done. Because anytime I can like do a little wink and nod to Jenna Marbles, I want to uh-huh. do it. Right. Um, because she's my faves. Uh, I really liked uh the one where, and these are all mine, of course. Because why no, would that's I? Great. Why would I like yours, Aaron? <laughs> You've already mentioned one of mine, so I know that's not true. <laughs> um, there are two questions a man has to know in life, and just n- the the delivery of the oh, oh, I know this one. Um, is it bigger than average? And this happens to all guys, right? Yeah, I really liked writing that one. That yes. was kind of fun for me. Uh, there was quite a few. Uh, I oh, I also liked being able to like in the cab. You know, the cab driver's like, has he hit you? And it's like, oh, it's good. The show has a moral compass. And then he immediately starts asking if she was like naked when she was getting spanked. Uh-huh. So then just being able to turn it around and then keep the sin, mm-hmm. like kind of almost show that we're going to give us a, a, a sin back for having a moral compass. But then it's immediately snatched away because mm-hmm. of the natural progression of the conversation. Um, yeah. And I also like that you and I had one that was a, a combine like or an alt. Like we both wrote one about how she startled on the couch. Yes. But but she would still have other senses to be able to tell that this large man had sat down at some point yes. in time. Yeah. So, Literally taste is the only way of her senses <laughs> that she would not know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Good stuff. Well, you guys took all mine. Uh, so, yeah, we've mentioned everything I think oh, we want to mention from this one. And this was the one where I did the Edward Scissorhands handy joke, which, yeah. which we referenced a couple weeks ago. I was getting a lot of love in the comments. Nope. But I, I assumed one or both of you had watched a lot of this show. This no. felt like an Aaron Good. show, first off. Cool. So, 
But you know, I just I, kind of assumed Aaron had watched it. <laughs> um, it was interesting too that the comments, though, and I don't want to take anybody's uh, comments because no, this, this one has a really. I don't have any from this. Do you have a comment from this one, Aaron? I do, but I, I mean, if you talk about it, it's fine. It is doesn't it bother JB's? me. Is it JB's? Uh, no. Okay, so there is a great run of comments in this chain. If you want to throw in your own comment, so fun to do so. Go over. It's it's one of the top ones that's been upvoted like 592 times at this point in time. Um, and there's 19 replies to it, and it's all versions of the, what the show could have been called instead. And so it's oh, all fun. the fans kind of giving yeah. new ones. Um, and one of them is so in that thread, there's one from Davin that says, "How I obsessed over your aunt Robin and almost ruined her wedding to your uncle Barney and destroyed the best relationship I ever had twice before realizing that I'm an asshole and let her know that I'm going to leave her because." Or be, because only two, uh, but only actually met your mother. It's just, anyways. There's a whole bunch of That's them that are like that are like this. Yes, how your mother fortunately died, so I can finally bang your aunt <laughs> was suggested. <laughs> Um, so there's, and a lot of the comments, they were really kind of like poo pooing on the show. It's like, they kind of like that we send this one almost that this, this pilot or this show deserved to be sinned. And a lot of times I feel like people want us to send something cause they sort of love it. Mm-hmm. But this one, they were like, the fans are kind of like, yeah, I get it. Cause we were so <laughs> yeah, mad at the well, end. I will say, I mean, I think, I think like lost, I, I think this, this and lost are the two more recent shows I can think of where like the last season or two are poo-pooed on by most fans. Well, and you got Game of Thrones. Mm. Oh, yeah, Game of Thrones is a really good recent one, too. And there's also a lot of conversation of people rehashing their love of the show and the disappointment with the end. Like, the comment... Uh, the comment section of this particular one is just riddled with conversation. So yeah. that's only the other thing I wanted to, re- to st- nice. talk about about this particular one. Good stuff. Well, let's move on to music video sins. Uh, hey, we're on music video sins, guys. Okay. <laughs> I legitimately thought Barrett was tweeting about us. <laughs> I was like, BGS, woo! <laughs> now, was that, did you, before this, yeah. did you know BTS was a thing? Had you ever heard of it? Nah. Oh, okay. No. Nope. Turns out there's they're real popular. <laughs> they are very popular. I, I learned- yeah, we've been we've been doing K-pop videos on MVS for a few years now, and I mean, I, but that was the first time I got any I knew anything about K-pop was through wor- working on music videos. Since it's a it's a really fascinating. It's a huge uh, genre. I learned about yeah. them when I was trying to figure out what Twitter handle we should have for the show. Yeah, that's what because I BTS is like completely taken, taken and yeah. there's so many bts hashtags uh which i went down the rabbit hole and of course people love to use bts reaction gifs it's like a way to kind of troll or be silly Mm -hmm. or whatever but yeah continue and so i learned then what it was but then still bts to me is our show so anytime it like pops up from one of the a team i completely Uh even when the email went out about his script i thought he was doing something kind of like well we had fans contacting us too like i totally thought (laughs) that that was about you guys (laughs) no it's great well and then ashley Ashley sent the edit, you know, out to to me and Barrett, and I just saw the title in the email. You know, the BTS edits up for approval. I, I was know. Like, oh, is Ashley editing the podcast? I, I know. Like, yeah, I was super confused. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're dorks. <laughs> uh, the song is called On, and uh, I'll start off with the usual Aaron stuff. Um, appears to be a song about jumping into the pain of relationships. Sure. Um, it, it's <laughs> uh, it's actually deeper than I gave it credit for at first glance, because there's an interesting topic here at the center of this, which is the pain of relationship is sometimes long term. What makes a relationship so special? Like, you know, if, if you can fight through the pain of that is normal with all okay. relationships, okay, 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 like you can get to a place. I feel like what we need to do during this segment <laughs> is have some of that really like cheesy, like yes. happy music playing yes. in the background. Or pro- so, professorial music or something. Just, yeah, yeah. Some, something that's sort of, yeah, orchestral and like it sort hey. of builds as you, you just share about meaning and purpose Philosophy and love and, yeah. yeah yeah hey listen aaron, aaron is a person that lives in a house full of people so <laughs> that's true he knows what he's talking oh about oh my god it's true though I, as i was as i was looking at the lyrics i was like i was like i kind of like what this is saying you know because there is this essence of don't put yourself in a dangerous position you know get out of that relationship if if it's toxic which is also yeah, yeah. healthy but there's also a very healthy way to 
fight in a relationship. You know, there's a healthy way to battle through disagreements and those kind of things, um, misunderstanding. So I don't know. There's there was something about the lyrics that that I um, once I had the translated version in front of me, uh, cool. you know, kind of enjoyed. Uh, having said that, the song itself is super cotton candy pop. Like that's what K-pop is, and I actually kind of dig it. It um, makes your soul hurt. Does it? Does it make your soul hurt? I, you, you know, you kind of like whenever you have too much sugar and your teeth hurt. Yeah, but it's more. In I your don't soul. even think she realizes she did that. <laughs> That was a perfect pun. Yeah, that was um, great. Dang it. I do this all the time. <laughs> dang it. I wish I could be purposefully clever. Sure. But no. I'm, I'm just accidentally. Accidentally clever is I'm great an too. accidental genius. That's, that's almost better. <laughs> it is almost better. Uh, Bear- I don't really like. Uh, I, I've enjoyed some of the K-pop we've done, but I, I've never really gotten into BTS. I don't know. They feel they they feel a little formulaic compared to some of the other ones we've done. Like we did this really cool, this really cool group where I don't hear too many people talk about called Red Velvet. Um, I've actually listened to some of their other stuff. Yeah. Uh, Black Pink, I think, is better than BTS. Uh, but they're okay. You're I mean, just, th- th- it, it's perfectly harmless. Like I'm, I don't hate this song. You're just saying words now. I don't believe those are actual bands. You're just saying <laughs> those words. are people we've covered on. Uh, <laughs> but BTS gets really confusing too because like the the there's so many of them and like I, I swear to God at one point there's like there was like 15 kids like in one of the videos we did it was insane. Wow. Um. I. And then a lot of them do solo projects and have left and it, you know, oh, and we haven't even talked about the fact that uh, Barrett takes this over. Yeah, I was going to say, before we get to Barrett's uh, Barrett's comments, I did want to say, Barration! Barration! Yay! Aw, that's Which, really smart. <laughs> what Barrett have to say about uh, about the process? It's pretty uh, good, though. He said it was fun uh, because they're always fun. Um, but yeah, it's the first non-Jeremy narration in MVS after the first couple of sins. Um, there's always a little bit of backlash doing an MVS video for those guys since they have such a rabid fans, which they are called the army. But in general, people seem to appreciate the lighthearted roasting of the video. I thought the comments were full of people loving it. And, well, and mm-hmm. I, I love that, too, because, uh, you know, we want to sort of shift. If, if you are um, on Twitter, if you're following Jeremy, you kind of know that the plan is for Jeremy to kind of not have as much to narrate. And so on music video sins, it's an easy kind of switch because Barrett already did the narration for uh, music from behind Mm -hmm. was doing a fantastic job there. So he's kind of like getting into the driver's seat of this video and it's sort of a, a handoff to yeah. uh, to Barrett so it's hey, exciting there was somebody on Twitter that suggested Barrett take over cinema sense I'm just controversy starts I'm just saying <laughs> that's right oh man there's there's so many suggestions on that uh, Twitter feed they're <laughs> suggesting like famous actors uh-huh. coming yeah. in and, and what a fun world that would be yeah. but here we are watching it actually come to fruition and so it was I don't know it was kind of fun to watch somebody that you've been working with like for me I've not been working with with Barrett as long but it's and knowing the kind of responsibility that it takes to do that uh, and watching behind the scenes how much stuff happens in this job and all the responsibilities to see Barrett kind of like just step up to the plate and just crack. Yeah. It, awesome. So yeah. Yeah, he did stuff. awesome. Yeah, he really did. Um, one pelvic thrust at a time. I uh, had to mention <laughs> that. Uh, and also the very last outtake, I think I see a nipple outtake, uh, was oh, yeah. so great. Uh, never, there's the, I, it's hard to use a Seinfeld quote poorly in the outtakes. They always do well. I also really liked that we may have uh, the first Barrett narrator cliche uh, with the L.A. River. Oh, and yeah. as we're thinking about merch, that's kind of like... It's his first cliche. <laughs> I wrote the LA River down too. Yeah, we've uh, that that's a really popular like destination for music videos. Right. It's, it's crazy how often they use that. Playing off Danae's accidental pun, I loved uh, Mad Max Soul Town Road and mm-hmm. Creek Three Soul Survivor. Yes, those were great. <laughs> those were great as well. Uh, let's move on to Cinemasins for the week. Uh, we'll start with Terminator Dark Fate. This was an Atkinson Scott old school oh. OG, OG joint, uh, Chris and Jeremy writing on this. Um, I guess I'll start uh, with my thoughts on Terminator Dark Fate because I think I liked it more than most people. Um, I, it felt interesting to me. I was uh, captured by kind of what they wanted to do in this universe and kind of where they wanted to shift it. I actually thought it 
made me care about the Terminator franchise again. Um, now, a lot of that probably has to do with Mackenzie Davis, who I fully admit I have a huge crush on. Uh, she is incredible. Apparently, um, everyone in the video did, too. <laughs> yes, those were those scents were great. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I kind of enjoyed this. Um, what did you think, Jonathan? Um, so, I thought Mackenzie Davis and Natalia Reyes and Linda Hamilton, I, I thought all three of them, like, just kicking ass and stuff, uh, was, was a lot of fun. Um, I think they give interesting performances. Um, I I think everything else about it's pretty much crap. I I, I I didn't like this at all. Yeah. What? So what specifically was it? The story? Was it the world yeah, building? Yeah. I mean, I I think maybe maybe even like the structure of it. I I really I, I hated the. Inter- I thought Arnold Schwarzenegger got forced in there and didn't need to be there at all. Um, and then, and then you have to deal with crap like towards the end where he's sacrificing himself again mm-hmm. and which felt really false considering that, you know, the, the movie seems to be about the three women. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, it just, it, it and I'm, and this is coming from someone who has enjoyed at least, at least found every Terminator film leading up to this watchable. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the first two. I like each one after that less, but like, I didn't hate Genesis. I guess for me, I didn't mind having uh, Schwarzenegger there. I thought he was funny. I think you're right about the the fact that he was kind of forced into the sacrifice thing again. And I think the, the video does a good job at pointing out how ridiculous that is and how mm-hmm. it's been done so many times before and all of that. But um, but I, I kind of enjoyed the character uh, that he was playing and some of the, you know, because the, there is something about the Terminator, the Schwarzenegger Terminator, when he's more human and aware that I find really humorous. And it had some of those moments uh, yeah, that I, I like from him. And, and I thought it was kind of cool that he ends up, I mean, I guess if we're talking about this. We can spoil it because we're doing the, the mm-hmm. video, but he ends up being the Terminator. He's not the one from T2 because the one from T2 died. Right. So he ends up being the one that actually killed John Connor. Yeah, I, I which was... is super interesting, but I don't think the movie does anything with it. They kind of try to play it off. Yeah, it, they use it as a reset button um, in a lot of ways, but I do think they they deal with the consequences of it. Like certainly, yeah. Linda Hamilton's character is you know part of her know, whole yeah, motivation like, like, is dealing with that. Like you had that whole line which we they send where they hit where he she's just like I will never call you Carl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's his name. And which is actually a really interesting line, but like the way it's done in the movie, it just kind of lays there, like or lies there, you know? Yeah. It, like it doesn't have any meat to it like it should. Yeah. In my opinion. Man, I mean that's how it came off to me. I, but I don't know. I mean but there are a lot of people that enjoy this. I've heard a lot of people say it, they think it's the best one since two. I, I don't agree with that, but I think um, I do. I think it's my third favorite. Yeah. I've that never makes seen sense, any of I think them. people that like it, that's that they feel like it's a better continuation. Um I actually really like three. Um Salvation and Genesis weren't like very good, but I like I said, I just found them watchable. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, you know, I mean I, I, I guess I get why people liked it. And, and Mackenzie Davis is outstanding i think linda hamilton's really good too i've never seen any of them never seen a terminator movie nope. i mean oh, i wow. obviously know them because of the iconic yeah you know sayings from them and like the visuals and which so. were so eye-rollingly bad in this one some some of the first why, references why do movies think they have to go back and touch on things from before well like, it's not just touching on them it's the the forced play on them yeah i don't like, like it it's like stand on your own two feet yeah terminator whatever you are yeah the but, i won't be back was just oh it was just yeah we know you're you're an old old man yeah. Well, in that line, I mean, that God, that line and that line has been used in so many other movies right. that aren't even Terminator movies. Hell, Arnold Schwarzenegger used that movie in one of the Expendables. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Bruce Willis is like, no, I'll be back this time. You need to quit being back. You know, and you're just like, oh, my. And that was terrible. Well, I'm, and it, it just feels even worse here. I'm curious, Danae, from you as yeah. somebody who doesn't know the movies, like, mm-hmm. what do you think watching this? OK, video? OK, OK. So there are these companies that are Skynet people, mm-hmm. and and but it's not anymore. Nope. But it once was. Mm-hmm. And then there's these robots uh, that are given, they're sent back in time to kill people that will eventually be people that they don't like. Mm-hmm. That, that's the end. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much oh, it. Oh, oh, and then there's other robots that are also sent back to stop the other robots from killing the people. Uh huh. Somehow it all makes sense. No, and, no, it doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> None of it makes sense. 
I really picked, I picked that up from the, the video quite a bit, you know, just the questioning the, well, this doesn't make any sense if you put this, you know, mm -hmm. lens on it or whatever. Not to mention just all the like, why aren't you using a gun or why are you having to punch through windows when you could. So th those things, you know, are questionable, obviously, the or, or, or turning into a twin, all these sort of conveniences yeah. that are just obviously for the show of it or the CGI of it or the how can we change Terminator into something more interesting, but then they accidentally made it worse by not you know maybe not sticking they should have stuck to what they knew which give a robot a gun yeah i don't know i think you mentioned the two things that i specifically wanted to bring out as the two things i think this movie most deserves sin for which is number one the new abilities of the rev nine which make no sense whatsoever um the mechanics of it can make a little bit of a sense but the reason why this this creature would ever be like together when he could have two of him doing separate things. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it makes no sense. And then the other thing is the time, the way they just continue to ravel the time travel so that it's, Oh, it's a mess at this point. You yeah. either just have to go with it or not. Exactly. I, mean, I don't, I don't even know how to wrap my head around it. It would, Oh, it would give me such a migraine. Yeah. I, I compare it to, you remember old school headphones that actually had wires no. And you, yes. would, you would get, they would get all Those tangled still exist, up, by the way, they, they, get, they would get all tangled up. And it's like, yeah. it's like the, you would, you would like not know where one began and the other one in, and you'd have to try to untangle them. And sometimes you'd make it worse. And then this, every movie just adds a new set of headphones tangled into that mess. And it's just like, I, I can't understand any of it and get it untangled. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think well, it's like in the, like, and it has to do with the fact that the movies are many years apart so the technology in, in our lives is better but it's you know and i think danae kind of touched on this a little bit it's just so weird that you have like i don't know does that mean like the technology gets better even though like the 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 time looping changes and like how would they know to build the advanced robot if skynet was destroyed I, you know and, and chris i mean they touch on that a little bit in this video did Chris or Jeremy have anything to, to yeah. say? Yeah, they both actually turned uh, turned in their homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris said Terminator Dark Fate is decent for a while until the movie has to find a way to fit Linda Hamilton and especially Arnie into it. It has a great feminist vibe to it, but they still need him for some reason. It can be said it's the best Terminator since two or maybe even three. It's certainly better than Salvation Genesis, but it's a low bar to clear. My favorite thing to pick on during this movie is Mackenzie Davis's character's unwillingness willingness to tell the new john o'connor danny why she's so important in the future grace constantly tells her how important she is but without explanation and then by the time of the reveal the reasoning is that the future danny told grace that her past self wouldn't be able to handle it even though the danny we see in this is strong uh she's a strong leader of her family telling everyone what to do and even yelling um as she and her brother's boss as she and her brother's boss um, so it's the usual, I don't, didn't tell you to protect you nonsense that movies try to get away with when they just want to keep something secret for a reveal later. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that says it for me. Uh, and then Jeremy added Terminator Dark Fate is a decent action chase film for 30 minutes and then turns into cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's amazing and then his how is that not a sin in the video <laughs> and then he and then he follows that with i hated it of course of course chris is right in that forcing arnie and linda hamilton into the plot grinds it to an uh halt and ruins what could have been fun and fresh my favorite thing is to nitpick when the stupid rev 9 terminator constantly splits into two terminators yeah. at one point in the battle as though it wouldn't always be better to be two terminators instead of one and then he uses the drones to go after them drones in all caps uh, a terminator using a drone can you imagine <laughs> yeah we can uh, we can just assume that jeremy really doesn't like drones or at least not the way they're used in movies you could say he's droning on about it oh <laughs> you could you could say it so yeah. i will say the rev nine is one of the more interesting villains the franchise has ever had um he's actually legit he's actually pretty like he's not scary but like you know uh you can see him being an issue. Well, I thought Gabriel Luna was was great. Yeah, I, yeah. I had no problem with that performance. I at can't all. remember the actor's name. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was great. Is he a Game of Thrones guy or something? Or? I don't know if Gabriel was a uh. Game of Thrones. I know he was a uh, ghostwriter on the Agents of Shield show. 
Um, oh, that's 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 what I was thinking of actually. But um, um, but I, I, I knew he was on it. something recently. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, those thoughts on the movie itself. Uh, as far as specific sins, I loved the paper football touchdown uh, concept <laughs> yeah, and the fact that the callback is just touchdown. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Uh, I thought that was really great. What about you guys? I don't even remember what they were talking about when it got to this, but I just love that part. I love when they do stuff like the update. The movie never explains this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we already talked about the clone bot. They didn't keep using that. Um, oh, um, they mentioned how they didn't separate the saucer section on TNG every time. That was kind of funny. Yes. Even yeah. though I do believe they didn't do that because that would be a huge pain in the ass to have to do right. that every time. Right. But still, very very interesting. Um, and then I do not care about grandma and grandpa's feud, uh, which was how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny that stuff. Scene. Danae? Uh, yes, Aaron. Did you have any other sins you wanted to mention? Did you have a question for me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what is I, the meaning of life today? Yeah. Okay. So I, this is a really big one. So it'll take us a while to talk about, you know, the meaning of life and everything, but actually it's super quick and easy now that I think about it. I mean, that's how fast I think about things. It's just love, man. It's just love. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's all in that BTS song called on. We, we legitimately talked about everything except for the cliche places for the action sequence to take place being Hoover Dam. Yeah. That was one of my favorite scenes of that one. <laughs> well, in the callbacks for it are real nice too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's very well done. Um, the, the, there's also a sin at the very, it's like towards the beginning ish where, um, the sin is kind of like, uh, I haven't seen this, but I know she's going to throw the phone out the window because that's what always happens because I've seen movies kind Mm -hmm. of thing. And it reminded me of something that happened in a script uh, and I don't know what to do. And I can't tell you what script it is because it's coming, right? Okay. So it's, it's a spoiler. I right. could beep it out. It's beep. I can't tell you. Um, but what I did is I'm as I'm writing it, I, I'm i like, I'll give all the sins back if she vomits on your face right now. But then she actually does vomit on his face and I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> guys, do I keep it in the script and do we give sins back? Or <laughs> what's crazy is you're not talking about Knives Out, which has that exact same plot point of really? vomiting on somebody's face. So, well, no, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I just like I don't know what to do because it was a genuine moment where I was like, I'm gonna give all, which is exactly what all, we do on the channels. I'll give all the sins back if X Y Z happens right now, and I'm like, if she vomits on his face, but then she does. And I just had to stop. I had to put my computer away. Maybe you should give all the sins back. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I think you have to either cut it or wrestle with that as the narrator. Because, I mean, don't. if you don't, then you're just cheating. I know. Well, here's, here's what you do. Okay. Here's what you do. Okay. We're going to write this together right now. Okay. Well, you, I, you, mm-hmm. you're, you do like the, oh, crap, from the narrator. Right, it, right. This actually happened. Right. And then, you, well, I'm, uh, you know, I may be a jerk, but, but I'm a man, I, of, I'm my a man word, of my word. And they all go away. And then you go, here's the exact same number of sins for this. <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> yeah. thinking about yeah. doing. Yeah, that's okay, what you okay, do. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to add them all back for something else. <laughs> for something that else, yeah. And all of a sudden, this is worth 63 cents. Okay, 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 yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. I, I legitimately was like, I need to reach out to my co-writer here because I don't know what to do, man. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Zombieland Double Tap. Um, this is a Cher Watkins uh, script. So Barrett and Jonathan wrote on this. Uh, Danae, I'm assuming you've never seen either of the Zombieland movies. No, no, but I watched... Never- the first... Whenever you say that, it's always like you're saying you, you share Watkins, like <laughs> sharing like I'm being Watkins. Shared. <laughs> you are, man. You yeah. are. No, I I haven't, but I watched the Sins video for the first one, oh, so okay. I feel like I know it really well. Of course, well. of course, <laughs> it's the same damn movie. <laughs> it really that's, is. That's actually what Barrett said about it. He said Zombieland is a rinse, dry, repeat. I couldn't yep. probably. I could have probably told you how that movie went from the trailer. Uh, Jonathan has a good beat on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, were, we were pretty much in sync except for one thing, I believe. But yeah, I um, um I must have been in a forgiving mood. Uh, I, I would never say I like this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you're going to copy and paste a movie, Zombieland's not a bad movie to copy and paste. I had a good time uh, with a lot of this stuff. But at the same time, it's like, how about a new movie? You know? So yeah, look, we did a we did a mini pod. Chris and I did, and actually, our friend uh, uh, Dave Dave Irwin was on there with us because he went and saw it with us. Um, and I gave it like a semi favorable review. Like I kind of slightly said, you know, if you enjoyed the first one, you'll probably have fun with this one. It doesn't hold up on a second viewing, though. No, I guess I haven't gone to that second viewing yet. So yeah, there's no need to. I just, you know, I I remember really loving um, the Madison character, Zoe Deutsch. No, I that's the one thing I think Barrett and I disagreed on. I had a sin removal for her, as it should be. 
As and it instead should be. of the sin removal, there's like seven sins about how dumb yeah, she Barrett is. Yeah, Barrett hated that. I thought, yeah. but see, I thought it was a play off the dumb blonde in a really interesting way. I thought she was going to be I one of too. the advanced zombies. <laughs> when I was watching the video, I was well, like, yeah. ooh, what if she's one of the advanced zombies? That would have clever. Like, you know, I mean, like a maybe brainless. Maybe my love for Zoe Dutch. Is, like, I think she's a great actress. Because so. she was brainless, you know? Yeah. That so probably then, helps. How cool would it be for her to just be like brainless and then like yeah. murdering people? There is a moment, though, where you feel like she's well aware of what's going on, though, because um, Emma Stone's been, like, just, like, talking down to her the whole time, and you get the impression that Madison doesn't get it, but then there's a moment where she says something, you know, she's like, oh, I miss this, or something like that, where you're just like, oh, you know, she's being sarcastic, and yeah, she totally got all of this. Yes. <laughs> I thought it. I thought it was an interesting little turn on the dumb blonde, but uh, yeah, I thought I thought I, Zoe Dutch just played it so well. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but the other, but the main cast is very unlikable. Yeah, totally. I, I, yeah, there's nothing more true in this video than at the beginning when it said, you know, we're here to play the hits. Um, mm -hmm. It is definitely that kind of movie. So, and the the video rightly sends it several times for that so yeah and even though we took some shit for that whatever in the first one about them eating the burger and that was patient and zero I, that sin that barrett wrote was so excellent though about the where he's just like nut up or shut up but you know mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> like you just said we're playing the hits <laughs> yeah totally uh danae what'd you think about the uh the video itself it really did remind me of the first one uh in its color and its play and its silliness uh and then the sins of course pointing things out like, uh, for example, the very, very beginning when uh, Woody Harrelson tackles someone and just pointing out like how bad of an idea that is mm -hmm. to tackle yeah. a zombie and just weird decisions about when to shoot and, you know, things like. Well, and a lot of that stuff, of course, you know, we've we've sent Walking Dead episodes and, you know, it, zombies are so easy to sin. Yeah. Because it's such a stupid monster. Well, then they all went like off of the, uh, I guess, into the water or off of a cliff, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't 100 percent sure where they this went is, in the, the end. The limbing moment at the end. Yeah. yeah. So um, it just it, it's interesting to see how they choose to live. And then I guess they find a group of survivors to not have to just live in isolation any longer, which is maybe like a way to kind of put a little bow on some of the story if they don't go back to it. But it just seems like this is a funny like it's a it's a movie that doesn't take itself seriously. It doesn't take zombies seriously. It's just it's just there for laughs. Um, but I did. I do like it whenever uh, any of you guys does the thing where you realize that in the movie itself, they should have an awareness of who Woody Harrelson is. Mm -hmm. Like, I, mm -hmm. I can't remember who the Pres pardon was President for. Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it listed, I guess, his, his movies. His movies and included and then, one with Woody Hit White with, Man Can't Jump. Yeah. Right. And so then, but I like when you guys do that, because I always forget mm -hmm. about that being an option. And I think that that's just a funny thing to, to consider that. At the well, very least, they should be saying, why do you look just like Woody Harrelson? Right. You yes. Know? And I had forgotten when I wrote that I had forgotten that in the uh, in the Zombieland sins video right before this came out, they uh, Barrett might have been I don't know somebody touched on that with Bill Murray, yeah, because right? Bill Murray and Woody Harrelson are in Kingpin together, right? So. Um, so why I, wouldn't he be like, you look like my friend? Yeah, don't I know you? <laughs> uh, I also really liked the um, Madison not having a nut allergy. So that yeah, was that was a, that was funny. That was one that made me laugh. <laughs> uh, the two I wanted to pull out were um, the the sin that was that ended with the hyper specific hotel reference. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I really I believe that, firmly. By the way. I, I think I have an idea of what he's talking about there, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, uh, you, you don't come to this podcast for lessons in comedy, but there is nothing better for comedy than specificity. Uh, the more specific you can make something in a joke, mm -hmm. the funnier it gets. And it's just, that's, that's a great example of that. Uh, mm -hmm. and then I also enjoyed, uh, the, the fact that when they said the worst running joke was, uh, the hippie thing that it my brain i was like actually the minivan joke was a lot lamer and then they did the minivan joke being lamer and i was oh, like it's thank it, those you those both are so bad woody harrelson i mean i mean he probably got paid a ton of money so i don't feel bad for him oh, but those, man he got short shrifted in this movie so bad oh those like, minivan jokes oh it's just and then he can't drive a truck yeah oh, that's awful yeah uh what about you jonathan uh, I like you mentioned the the nut allergy was probably my favorite. Yeah. I like the uh, the walking to Memphis reference mm -hmm. was really good, um, especially the very last bit where he's like, you know, the security guards they didn't see him. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, the idea of him being, uh, the idea of uh, Jeff C. Eisenberg being an expert jeweler, because he apparently turned the Hope Diamond into, into a, a ring, ring yeah. which yeah. I did not think about. I wrote I that like, down, too. That's amazing. It, yeah. I literally wrote that down as well as one of the things I like that they pointed out. <laughs> yeah. You know how hard it would be to set the Hope Diamond? And pretty hard. Yeah. And it wouldn't just, look that good. That's for sure. <laughs> I guess I just, in my mind, I wasn't thinking about that it wasn't already a ring. <laughs> just It didn't come to me. And then, you know, Barrett wrote that. I was like, that's brilliant. Have you ever seen uh, the Hope I, Diamond in person? Uh, yeah, I actually have, but I was a kid. I, I think it's a necklace. Yeah, it's a necklace. I can't remember. Yeah, they yeah, had it at necklace. the Smithsonian when yeah. I was there, but I was really young. Yeah, it's a necklace in, in its current form. <laughs> So maybe is it at the Smithsonian still? Because I remember I at the so. time it was like it was touring basically. Like yeah. you could see it at different places. But maybe that's where it is normally. I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, right now it's on Emma Stone's finger. So it's in the National oh, yeah, Museum the First of Lady. Uh, National Natural National Museum of Natural History. The Natural um, U- no. Museum of Nat- National History. Shut up. Um. Yeah, this thing is huge. And I always love getting a Passenger 57 reference in anything I can. So I was really happy we were able to do that. Yeah, Nicely you guys done. did great. Nicely done. And uh, we did, didn't we? We're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, let's move on to keeping tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're each going to tell a story from putting together the content last week. Could be maybe a search, some strange uh, research uh, you did, maybe a deleted sin. And today we're starting with Danae. Hi. I wasn't paying attention. You remember that one time you told me to pay attention whenever we did the show? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I I wasn't listening when you told me to pay attention. (laughs) This is the segment that Aaron tried to start the show on. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Also, this was actually recommended merch for BTS. (laughs) was like you and Jonathan on the front of his shirt and then me wandering around in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is very funny. Oh, no. I'm glad people pay attention um, more, more than you do. So for keeping tabs, I was looking up a lot of things with How I Met Your Mother because mm-hmm. that's the only one that I wrote on this week. Mm-hmm. But the one that I really was excited about was my search on to Willy Wonka Fruit because um, at one point in time, there's this table and it has all these like oddly shaped colored round things mm-hmm. and it doesn't make sense what it is. Somebody was, said it might look like uh, pool balls from like a pool something, hall. Something, yeah. But they're Bocce different, balls they're or something. different sizes though. Yeah. And so that didn't make any sense. And also they're, some are gone later. So why would you just take some and put them someplace else yeah what are those things uh the apartment's really interesting i mean it's filled with all kinds of odds and ends there's actually like a jar filled with buttons that's in the background of that Mm -hmm. show i found that to be very interesting because i think buttons are cool but anyway these balls all i could think about oh no i almost said something terrible (laughs) go for it you have a nut allergy (laughs) sorry go ahead and say it today this is this is amazing you actually caught it before it came out of your mouth (laughs) There, there, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> Go ahead. No. It's more fun now that you know. <laughs> now you can say it even knowing how funny you are. Say whatever uh, you were going to say about being uh, a fan of balls. Go no, ahead. I almost said all I could think about was I wanted a whole bunch of colorful balls in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That just means you're, you're, you, you love diversity. <laughs> Oh, because I just had this memory from watching a movie and I knew it was from Willy Wonka, but I couldn't remember where it was. So then I had to watch several just weird scenes from the original Willy Wonka. You mean the entire movie? Oh, it's so <laughs> it's one weird. big weird scene. But it was somebody eating it. And yeah. so I knew it had to be in that candy room. Yeah. And apparently this is so crazy how the brain does this. Apparently it is a split second of watching okay, what is uh, Augustus Gloop mm-hmm. and he's just eating this colorful oh, off the tree off of a tree yeah that's it and i thought it was way longer way more interesting because i have always been curious about what that fruit would taste like in my imagination yeah. i clearly have like that would be so good yeah so as soon as Get i saw gloop balls in your mouth oh wow wow oh i didn't say that <laughs> Man, you Aaron said trying that to be pervy is quite possibly the creepiest thing <laughs> It really Wait, is. what was pervy? I'm confused. <laughs> what? You guys are confusing me. I have yeah, no joking. idea. It's actually very funny. I think if you add the word gloop to anything, it kind of <laughs> immediately puts it into that. I guess it wouldn't be pervy. I guess it would just be gross. I don't know. So anyhow, that was kind Blue of some balls. of my keeping tabs was learning about all of the various candy, which by the way, nobody 
else in the entire world is interested in that particular gloop candy. Gloop balls. The gloop balls. Yeah. Not interesting to other people. It was never turned into a franchise of candy. <gasps> is is um is is it Goop? Is that the name of the company? Augustus. No, no, no. Oh. But is Goop the name of the company that What's Her Name does? Uh, uh, with that, with that vagina crystal. With the one with Paltrow. Yes. Yeah. Is it Goop? How has nobody yeah. done a parody called Gloop, where it's Augustus Gloop trying to sell like <laughs> candy? Can, you know, yeah, vagina candy. Oh, or something. vagina candy. <laughs> of course, what everybody wants. By the way, super quick. This just made me think of this, but in the outtakes on last week, because like sometimes with these Skype delays, I don't, I don't hear everything until I listen to the podcast. But when I made that comment about the there was an alternate ending for Frozen, and then I just said, you know, Kristoff is in the car, and then Aaron just goes, "Oh, Jonathan." <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was like his kid or something. It, it just, and I did not hear that on the recording. So when I heard that on the, oh, I, I could not stop laughing. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Oh, Jonathan, <laughs> I'm so disappointed in you right now. <laughs> That's all I have for mine. Um, what about you, Jonathan? What do you got? I looked up, um, if anybody, I, and I didn't really get a great explain. I didn't really get a great, uh, answer but i was trying to figure out when mountain dew expires there's a um there's a scene in zombie land where uh jesse eisenberg pours himself a mountain dew cold red and at this point it's been 10 years since the um since the zombie thing started so i'm assuming no mountain dew code red had been bottled in 10 years right and he just opens this two liter. So I was like, there's no way, even if he had just opened it, I'm just like trying to, there's no way. And we ended up not using it, but I was like, there's no way that lasted 10 years. Yeah. Um, and, and it might even be poison at that point. I don't even know. But um, <laughs> if it wasn't to I begin with, huh? If it wasn't to begin with. Exactly. I couldn't find anything definitive. The best thing I could find was there was something about where uh, people were estimating it was about 12 months to taste like new and 24 months to where it was still drinkable, um, which is way off of 10 years. So if anybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually curious at this point because I was shocked. It's always shocking when you can't find something online. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but especially something like this. And there were things where people were talking about it. It has to do with how it's stored. Like if you have it in direct sunlight, it'll go bad quicker. Uh, if the room temperature is not consistent. But I'm still I'm still guessing 10 years is too long. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I think 10 years is probably too long for a lot of things. I mean, even and even with electricity, I mean, even if they had it in a fridge, I just there's no way. I mean, cuz I know cans expire. Yeah, they so can. I would think 2 <laughs> liters would be the same way. <laughs> what? She's just so pleased with herself. You said, "I know cans expire," and she <laughs> she got this bright look on her face and to me it was like, "Yeah, they can." Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Intentional pun. I did it. <laughs> It's just the funniest part is she collapses in in just glee <laughs> at herself when she does it intentionally. Oh God! Uh, I wanted to mention that I did research on the laugh track. Speaking of uh, laughing for uh, how I met your mother, because there is a sin about it not being filmed in front of a studio audience, which is true. And when I did the research, it's kind of fascinating what they tried to do with this because they knew the show wasn't going to be able to have a studio audience because of how much it jumps around in locations and mm -hmm. time and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I, one of the producers, I think, is quoted as saying, um, we would have had to put the studio audience on you know, the payroll, basically, to have them stick mm -hmm. around for that much. Uh, and so what they did was they would film it and have the actors give a little space after what are supposed to be funny lines. And then they would show it to a, like a, what do you call that? Um, the test group. Uh, anyway. Oh, focus group? Yeah, like a focus group. And then record the focus group's laughter. And then use and use that uh, in addition to the usual laugh track tricks and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and what, what was fascinating to me was, I, in the sin we just mentioned that it's not filmed in front of a live studio audience. And then people in the comments are like, yeah, but those are actual people because they did a focus group. As if that's better. As if that somehow <laughs> makes it funnier or okay. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's it's really interesting to me to see how much they try to produce up the humor of old school sitcoms like that. Just so. imagine. Yeah, like, why why did they still, why did they just not have a laugh track at that point? Because right? there were other shows that didn't at that time. Yes. I mean, The Office was on at that time. I right? listen. I I am I am 
a developed enough adult human to know when I want to laugh. You don't have to mm-hmm. tell me where the laughs are. Well, and it's like a film, like a comedy. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't have a laugh track in it, you know? I mean, no. yeah, we're, we're, we're able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, we... No, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm wholeheartedly with you. I just don't think just because the show has a laugh track means it's bad, but I know what you're saying. And I guess now that we don't have as many of those, yeah, it becomes a little more obvious. I just wonder like how that focus group would work now in meme culture where i can't believe they had to focus group every episode i don't think they did i don't think there's no way yeah i don't think they did because because now humor is so different because we just see so much humor especially like with meme culture like this is what would happen it'd be like (laughs) that'd be someone's laughter (laughs) yeah just sort of like a nose snort well you know even in these focus groups they are amping them up and telling them to you know laugh like crazy and and in that room they're just pumping in laughing gas and not telling them <laughs> that's right have you ever done one me yeah yes yeah yeah I've, they're I've, interesting i've been to a live taping uh they bought us pizza about four hours in um because that's the thing you don't realize is they take like six hours to film oh i mean have you ever done a focus group <laughs> oh uh i have done focus groups as well yeah yeah yeah, fascinating stuff. I've done. I've. I well. I don't know if it was really a focus group because it was just me and a couple other people. I mean, I guess it was, but like they used to do that in the mall close to where I grew up. They would do uh, movie trailers. I thought you're and gonna you s- would get like you'd get like free passes to the theater and stuff if you watched a movie trailer and talked about if you were like I remember watching Under Siege two the trailer to that and nice. you probably would have hated that probably you'd have been like no I thought you were gonna say movie trailers shouldn't exist where's my coupon. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I I don't know if it was actually a focus group. It was just a couple of us in uh, my friend uncle's basement. (laughs) (laughs) It was real dark. It was real dark. (laughs) Kind of dank. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. They asked me to take my shirt off. It was weird. (laughs) It It was was really strange. I was like, now that I think about it, (laughs) I don't even know if we filled out a form at the end. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, That's good as way as any to wrap up keeping tabs. We'll head on to the comment section. I want to know what you're I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're each going to pick a comment or two to respond to from this week's videos. Uh, what do you got, Jonathan? Uh, from um, uh, Zombieland, Double Tap, I made a joke about the uh, he was wearing the Dragon's Lair t-shirt. And I made the comment that it was Dragon's Lair was a terrible game. And it I referred to the it made the Friday the 13th NES game like you know seem like an easy game to play or whatever because that's a notoriously like yeah. ridiculous game right um and then Ryan Clark commented uh Dragon's Lair was first an arcade game that wasn't anything like the NES version it was playable for one I'm saying that because I wanted to point out I was talking about the arcade game I just happened to use an NES game as an example to compare it to I assumed you uh, were talking that about that game yeah was not playable no <laughs> it was horrible it was ridiculous and it, and, it, and it was like one of those at the time like it, it either because at the time I guess games were like twenty five cents. That one was like either fifty cents or maybe it was even a dollar. Yeah, it was it was expensive. It was stupid to play. It didn't make any sense as a video game. Mm-hmm. You just interacted with it because it was a cool animation style in a video yeah. game, and nobody ever seen that before. And because it had the typical objectification of the woman in scantily you know uh, clothing. You know that's scantily yeah. clad. Scantily they even clad. made fun of it on Stranger Things. Yeah. So anyhow. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was a perfectly valid sin. Yeah, perfectly valid. Um, I want to throw a couple props out uh, before I get to uh, my comment. Uh, Praneev Ramkumar uh, in the uh, the Breaking Bad video and comment says, the opposite of a detective, a defective. <laughs> and I thought that was really <laughs> clever. Nicely done. And less less weird to say. <laughs> less and less difficult to say, which probably yeah. makes it a worse. It's more fun to have Jeremy say difficult things. What's a, sh- what's yeah. a show? I'm sure he thinks that. What's a show about a defective detective? <laughs> is it called The Defective Detective? I mean, I mean, you know, there, there's got to be a show out there where the oh, detective well, is just really bad at their oh, job. Oh, Pink Panther, um, Mr. Magoo. Mr. Uh, Magoo. You know, yeah, totally. Cool. Oh, Pink Panther, definitely. Um, so, and then this one is, uh, this was from the, also from the Crawl Space video. Can we have an official Cinema Sins t-shirt with the Cranston walked so the Joker could run quote on it? Uh, <laughs> I just mentioned this because, yeah, get your request in for what you want on a Cinema Sins t-shirt, uh, because we if, are doing If it's that. just words, do you not have to worry about copyright? Uh, yeah. I think you can. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. 
Um, but the comment I wanted to go with uh, was from the How I Met Your Mother video. Uh, it says, as a journalist myself, I must say kudos to Jeremy and the rest of the Sins crew for getting this one right. While news is dynamic and can happen anywhere at any time, generally speaking, journalists are informed ahead of time what they're going to be covering. And in the case of news that's breaking, the reporter who happens to be conveniently closest to the event in question is usually the one who gets called and asked. And that's usually before the news crew comes to pick them up, uh, assuming they don't oh, yeah. have a right of their own. So That was a really good sin. I forgot to mention that one. So I'm glad it was in your comments uh, yeah it, it, well and i only brought it up because i have been in a newsroom a lot mm -hmm. uh because doing movie reviews for the local news station and having good friends who are reporters and that's just I, not how it happens i was watching that going this is the silliest thing i've ever seen <laughs> they're gonna get in a news van and drive around looking for her like that's yeah. made no sense also cell phones <laughs> well, she should have had one that's true especially if you're a reporter so uh so yes uh i did appreciate that back up yeah exactly uh what about you Danae? um i've got two reviews i'm gonna do as comments because i'm so excited because uh, <laughs> you don't care about the rules nope uh the first one was tweeted at cinema since bts this comes from jeremy he said i tried sending this to here's your dang review Danae at cinemasins.com <laughs> but it wouldn't work a shrug of the shoulders so the screenshot is fine Danae. here's your dang review I love these guys. Aaron, Jonathan, and Danae have such awesome chemistry and are so fun to listen to. They give a peek into the world of CinemaSins and how they put together their videos. But they also go into so much more, oftentimes inappropriate. <laughs> yes, I, added too, part. I added that part. Way too much part. more. Um, if you're at all a fan of CinemaSins, then this is a must listen. <gasps> Thanks for Thank the review. That's actually a super, super good review. The next one, mm -hmm. actually, so then I created the the, e the email and I got one from J-Dub who says, these chips are good. Love listening to the B-Team every week. The trio of Danae. Hi, Danae. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan and Aaron are a great mix and compliment to each other. Um, so and then and then five stars. But what's interesting about this screenshot is that underneath it, he had given one star review to Tumblr <laughs> and a five star review to Reddit. So we are on par with Reddit. Reddit. You guys are great. So anyways, those are the comments I wanted to uh, highlight. That's <laughs> Thanks. Because technically te they are comments. Technically anything is a comment. <laughs> Danae, you got me on a technicality. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond! Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're going to each chat about something from the world of pop culture that we've seen recently. Um, it so. does not have to be something on a TV or a movie. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, and pop culture. Pop culture. Yeah, it fits into the pop culture. Just wanted, just wanted to let you know that. Bubble. Mm -hmm. We should be fine. Uh, I watch all six episodes of the Netflix docu-series Cheer. Um, now, this oh, is... Oh, is that... that That's the what Jonathan does, right? <laughs> well, jo yeah. I was... I, was I still haven't watched that. I don't, I don't know that I want to, but uh, no, I've heard it's really good. I had heard from several people I trust that it's a great documentary series, that it's really interesting and a good watch and well uh, edited and well put together. And so I thought I'd give it a chance. And I also thought it would, it would be interesting to talk about too with Jonathan here because I do know your family does kind of exist in the cheer universe. You're a cheer yeah, dad. Yeah, my daughter's been a comparative cheer, competitive cheerleader for two years. Now she's young, like she's only eight. So we're still in the smaller stages, I guess, of it. But yeah. we've gone to the nationals two years in a row. So no. Nice. Nice. Um, now is this in the Orlando? The national? Well, so not not Daytona, because this was in Daytona. They said that the nationals happened in Daytona. They have different. It depends on the type of cheering. I, I haven't I haven't seen it, so I don't know what they're doing. But they have different nationals at different places. So this follows the story of the Na Navarro cheer squad, which is mm -hmm. a junior college in Texas that has won fourteen national championships wow. in cheer and four of them grand national championships which i think the difference is the national championships are for junior colleges and then the grand uh, national championships are over like all the colleges yeah uh, so might be I don't, yeah i don't know about collegiate uh, so. that's that's my understanding whatever mm -hmm. the case may be as a junior college this is just kind of like ridiculous that they're you know this good yeah. and it really does a great job at locking you into these people uh, these cheerleaders that are doing this um, and kind of caring about them and what they're going through. It mm -hmm. does that wonderful thing that document the best documentaries do where you learn about something as you're experiencing it. So I am completely uh, unconnected to the world of cheer. 
And yet I found myself learning terms. And by like the third episode, my wife and I were speaking in cheer language to each other. You know, we're talking about who's going to make the mat, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And that's a sign to me of a great documentary because it it teaches you how to interact in this world that you've never been in before. And, you know, and shows you kind of the the nuances of that world. Uh, I I guess in college, it's kind of like football where you don't know, like, who's going to suit up that week because they have so many people on the team. Well, I mean, I'm I I won't spoil everything, anything. I loved this. Um, There are so many dramatic ins and outs of putting this program together. What Mm. eventually happens in the national championships is fascinating and interesting. The the coach uh, who coaches them is this really interesting person uh I, oh, cool. I i just found this whole thing my wife and i both did it was kind of one of those we didn't intend to binge and it was like oh we have to watch the next episode together <laughs> and by the end of it my wife is in tears like she is connected to these people so deeply i'm wow. like i'm like following them all on instagram i'm like you that's know, cool it's it's one of those things where you do you feel like you've got a new family that you've met through this docuseries and i would have never expected it so high 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 recommend from me uh, i think cheer is really well done cool yeah, i'm definitely gonna check it out my wife actually watched it because um, she was curious if it would be suitable for our daughter to watch and i don't think she's quite made that decision yet so she watched it without me but i'm i'm definitely gonna check it out because i've i've only heard great things about it so. yeah it's definitely real life you know i mean they, mm-hmm. they're not trying to sugarcoat things in in part of the fascination too is thinking would i let my child do this you know like uh and that's part of the the thing i you know i wonder in talking with you jonathan is like you know knowing the at the absolute uh trauma the human body takes doing the sport at its highest highest levels is not unsimilar to having a boy want to play football right like yes yeah. the concussions that happen in well, cheer are legit and real no, and for sure well and my daughter does gymnastics too which is also very it can be very damaging on the body mm-hmm. um i mean she's built for it if you know like no, I get she's it. got like the perfect build for it but even then i mean like i said you know we were talking about fractures i mean she's already had a couple of minor injuries it's it almost becomes it's one of those things where it's not whether or not she'll get hurt it's when yeah which is kind of scary but, no that's what that's you know, definitely the impression i got from this was yeah. uh you just you know that's that's why they have such a big cheer team even only even though mm-hmm. they only put 20 on the mat uh you know when they do their their full outs uh, for competition, um, they, yeah, they have to have so many more to fill in, uh, when, for when things happen. So yeah, it's, it's, man, it's fast. I just found it fascinating. It was fascinating. Oh, there's that word. <laughs> if you're, if you're playing the drinking game at home, you just that was take- what is that? What is that about? The fascinating? Is that me? No, no, it's me. no. That's one of oh, Aaron's okay. words he loves. Yeah. It's a great word. I find many things fascinating. Okay. They're getting people drunk now. So yeah. calm down. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Jonathan? Um, so I'm going to talk about actually about a podcast again, um, which I talked about one last week. This one is called uh, Chat Cemetery, and um, I'm talking about this for any uh, fans of Stephen King. I think this is a great podcast. Uh, this uh, woman, uh, Deanna uh, Chapman, um, she um, started this a uh, couple years ago, I guess, and she start she basically she started with Carrie, which was his first novel. And she's covering every book and every adaptation chronologically. And she has a guest on every week to talk about it with her. Um, I may or may not have recently guested on one. Uh, so that has nothing to do with why I'm talking about it, of course. But um, that might drop in a few weeks. Not sure. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a really cool podcast. And I've, I've actually started reading and in some cases rereading King from the beginning because he has such an interesting uh, uh, literary world that he's created where... And I've always read his books kind of sporadically. And I finally just got to a point where I was like, you know, I think I want to go back to the beginning and just kind of read from there because like everything kind of ties in. And I was really curious to kind of read that chronologically and see, or, you know, by release date and uh, see how all everything kind of like plays off each other and uh, stuff like that. I'm about, I've, I'm about seven novels in. I'm actually about to do one of my first really major blind spots, which is I've never read The Stand. Um, So I'm looking forward to that. So I've been kind of doing that like every other book I read. I'll throw a King novel in. Uh, But but this podcast has been perfect for me to um, follow while I'm doing that, just to hear people talking about it. And uh, I've really, I really, really enjoy it. And then, like I said, I was, she was nice enough to ask me to be on here recently. And I recorded that. I think I'm actually going to record another one with her uh, here in a few weeks. Um, so that, that's also been a bonus. 
um, getting to be on these other uh, people's great podcasts has been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to pump it a lot. She's a, she's a really, she's a very, very nice person. Very great, great person uh, trying to make this her, uh, she's got a couple other podcasts too, trying to make this like her career. And um, I, I think you guys should definitely check it out if you're a fan of Stephen King. It's called Chat Cemetery. Now, the important question is, uh, is cemetery spelled with a C or an S? It's spelled with an S. Of course it is. It's, it's a great title, by the way. Like, I don't... Yeah. It's a, I'm, I'm envious when people come up with cool titles. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love coming up with cool titles. It's one of my favorite things. No, that's why we're mm-hmm. friends. Did you know that? <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> the only reason. That's the 6% she This guy's a total loser. To <laughs> no. This guy's a dull hang. Okay, okay, okay. I but can't... man, can he come up with titles. <laughs> I thought I could play it off, but once you started, like, digging on yourself, I'm like, no, that's my friend. <laughs> uh, what about you, Danae? I've got a really quick and easy one this week. Uh, I also, just update. So last week I had mentioned Fantasy High Podcast, which is a Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. podcast. I actually finished it this last week, and it is super, super good. So if you decide to listen to the Fantasy High podcast, it's start to finish. It's like one story arc, but then apparently they do like sophomore year, and that's a separate podcast. So they continue with the characters. So if you really like them and you want to go back and listen to more, you're, you can do that. Um which I didn't realize, but Dimension 20, the people who put it on, tweeted at me after I said I finished it. And I had a little fangirl freak out moment. <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, the production quality on it, like I said, is superior. And the wrap up to the show was really fun. Uh, oh, nice. Like the big final boss was really fun. Um, it's definitely R-rated, which, of course, you guys love. So um, Sudoku, though, is my recommendation this week. The I've, game? Well, I found an app that isn't balls and I'm glute happy. balls. It's not not glute balls. Um, there's a lot of Sudoku apps out there. If you like Sudoku, you know this. This one is clean and simple, and there's not like ads. And I just think it's sharp and it's like simplistic uh, gameplay, which I look for when it's when it's a when it's a game like Sudoku. You don't have to make it complicated. It's by Dustland Design. D u s t l a n d Dustland Design. Is it just called Sudoku? Nice. It's uh, Sudoku dash. The clean one. Is it really? I promise. <laughs> yeah. There are... <laughs> that makes me, makes me think there, there's like all these rated X Sudoku <laughs> games out there. <laughs> they... <laughs> what would that even look like? Oh, this isn't one of those porn Sudokus. You can... How would it even be porn? <laughs> it's just all sixes and nines. You can... That's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's the only thing you can do because it is all numbers, right? I know it. Yeah. Um, like, you... Maybe I don't know what Sudoku is. You can change the background color. I have mine set to black with, you know, white numbers and then like a lime green sort of outline line um and there are in ad per- like there are some ad things but it's like the appropriately sized small ones they gotcha. don't pop up in the so, middle of your freaking game let me ask you a question because i dig myself some sudoku mm-hmm. um the thing i always find difficult about doing it in an app mm-hmm. is the notes you give yourself you know the notes of what can't go in a certain box mm-hmm. what you know obviously if something has to go in a box you put it there but i'm just saying like the idea of how you eliminate you know, your choices Options. and making notes. Mm-hmm. Like, does this have a way to do that? Or is it just you have to figure it out in your mind or have a separate piece of note paper? Um, so you can do like there's I think I think what you're asking is if you can do uh, like multiple numbers in one box to yes. give yourself options. Yes. yes, you can do that. OK, so you just, you know, you have a two ways of doing that where you can make it small and have all of your different options or you can um you know just have it fill and like once you have it fill like if you let's say you're looking for number one and you Mm -hmm. make it this is my number one it will automatically highlight all the ones across the board so you can kind of easily glance and see if you've got anything i love that when a game understands what's cheating and what's not about the game because that's not cheating that's just helping you do something that is normal to do during sudoku right like that's Mm -hmm. i like that it i I really like it because it's simple and it just does what you want it to do it doesn't make it complicated so anyway if you like sudoku this one might be one that you enjoy i never i never got into sudoku i don't i'm probably because i'm dumb but um <laughs> yeah i don't know i've always been a crossword puzzle guy but oh yeah um, which i haven't even done crossword puzzle in a long time but i used to do those constantly um yeah because cro- right. crossword puzzles those are for the dumb people <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't doing like new york times sunday or okay anything, fair, um, fair enough um but, it, uh, i didn't get i didn't get too deep into the settings uh you do have some assist stuff you can do like you can turn i said that it highlights you can turn off mm-hmm. the highlight you can turn off the remaining digit count um you can turn off the pe- it's called pencil whenever you pencil 
in the different options. You can turn that off. You can also do um, time counter on or off. Uh, you can double tap to erase or you can hold a cell to erase. So Zombie you can... land double tap? Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow, look at that time. <laughs> so you've That's got amazing. Some, you've got some options that you can do if you want to. And you can also change the position of the board on your phone. So uh-huh. it's got some fun customization. I really haven't played around with that yet. I just, I like the way that it, it came to me. So Ads? That's yeah. Does it um, have remind me, you're just trying to figure out the sequence of numbers. Yeah, that, yeah. Ha, so, you have clue, like, you, do you have clues? Or well, the, no, the, it's the, just it's a, it's a process of elimination game essentially. So each cell is going to have a number one through nine, and so and the same number can't be in any quadrant, any line, any horizontal line, mm. vertical line. Mm-hmm. So every column and every row is going to have one through nine, and every uh like little um, section is going to have a one through nine. So, so could you actually, could two people come up with two different sequences no. on the same puzzle? No, I don't think not, so. Not on a true Sudoku puzzle. Oh, okay. No. I, um, and so you'll kind of know, you can set up, I don't know if this one even has hints or not. I haven't, I don't turn mine on. Um, so you might find later on that you've made a mistake and you can just kind of start over again. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, but essentially it's a process of elimin- elimination game and you can do that process of, el- of elimination inside the little quadrant or a process of elimination by row or column. And so you're just looking Neat. at all these different variations of one through nine. So yeah. yeah. Does it have ads? I don't think so. I haven't had an ad pop up. It did say on the uh, when I was looking at it before telling you guys about it, it did say that there are in at uh, in game purchases you can do, but I don't even know what those what are. What would that be? I don't know. It must if it's be maybe hints or something. Themes maybe, or maybe there's extra levels or something. They do have an extreme level for those of you who like Sudoku. You don't have to start playing simple. You can Whoa. go to the extreme level. <laughs> So. Sudoku after dark. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's my that's suggestion. That's not the clean week. one. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it for Behind the Sins this week. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. You can hang out with uh, us on Twitter. I am at Aaron Dicer. She is at Danae Says. That's um, (laughs) D-E-N-E-E Says. And he is at Sam Loomis 13. (laughs) I wish you guys could have seen Aaron. He's just nodding like, get going. Get going, girl. Get it. So for Jonathan Watkins, (laughs) Danae Hughes, and myself, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BehindTheSinsPod at gmail.com. And be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter. And be sure to visit CinemaSins.com. Hey, you know, today I'm not going to be going to any, like, really important places. But do you think that when I do go to a place that people are going to be offended by my really dirty sweater is this offending you oh you've got mom shoulder yeah yeah for sure have mom shoulder i don't know what it is it's definitely crusty well that is one of the uh key characteristics of mom shoulder yeah is the uh the the fact that you don't know what is crusty smells maybe like cereal maybe oatmeal I, I think there's there's a 50% chance it's breakfast of some sort. Oh, no, th- th- this part definitely smells more like, I don't know, a crusty egg. There's 30% chance it's... I'm going to lick it. Spit up of some kind. Oh, okay, not licking it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we do the show, I spit up a little bit. <laughs> there's just a little bit of bile that kind of like rises in my throat. Glad you love the show so much. <laughs> it's, it's nerves. Gosh, I hope they like me. <laughs> How much does it take for you to become intolerant of that lactose? Like where I actually feel the pain? Mm-hmm. Um, Probably half a cup or more of milk Okay, is when I feel it really bad. Mm. Yeah. I used to think that it was anything, but then I realized that mostly I have milk in like coffee or like a latte and that people just poop because it's caffeine, you know? Yeah. I thought that I was pooping a lot because of the milk, but it turns out that that's just what happens when you drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what I've heard. Yeah, I, I learned that. I've managed to stay fairly <laughs> regular without coffee, so uh, it is possible. I don't know how you do it. Lots of water and uh, just deciding to poop at the same time every day. You just decide? <laughs> just decide. Mm-hmm. We're going to sit now. My if ba- things happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. My bowels don't talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a story, Danae. Once upon a time, I forgot my husband's birthday. The end. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it was only for like a day, right? Like, 13 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks. I got a text message from my aunt who I barely see. She lives in Texas. When's Justin's birthday? 
And I was like, I'll just get back to her later. And um, most of the day goes by and then I get back to my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to respond to my aunt now. And as I'm like going, you know, just a couple weeks ago and I went, it was a couple weeks ago. (laughs) And I, my husband had just got back from grocery shopping. And so I ran out to the garage and I opened the door. Iris is asleep in the car. So we can't, I I can't like yell immediately Mm -hmm. or whatever. When he looks at my face, he's like, what? And I just like kind of like a sad puppy, just sort of like move across the garage. Uh, you did the forgive me walk. I was entertained. Can we call that the walk of blame? And ashamed. So what's an entertained ashamed walk? Yeah. Well, I mean, Is the that walk it? of shame the means walk something of shame specifically. So I was thinking walk of blame. Yeah. But, yeah. but I'm not blaming anybody. Yourself? Mm, I can't blame myself. <laughs> oh, really? No, I really can't. <laughs> He, he was like, what is this face? And I said, I forgot your birthday. And he just smiled so big. Yeah. Well, because he, he's obviously purposely not mentioned it to nope. you. And I said, you didn't. Waiting to see how long it would take you to he figure it out. He was hoping I was going to forget for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> you get to next his, <laughs> next February yes. and you're like, oh, his wait, plan. did we do this last year? Yeah. His plan was to say, so it's been a year. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook anymore. Me and either. so nobody, like, I'm not seeing anything there because I don't uh-huh. go there. Yep. I'm not getting messages. It's like the phone number thing. Because we have cell phones and we just push a face, we don't remember people's numbers anymore. And because people have Facebook, they don't remember people's birthdays. I had two reminders in my calendar. Okay. Well, that's that's on you then. I am I am putting all of my brain power into my job right now. And it's showing like there's other areas of my life that super need attention. And so I really need to work on that balance, but I can't blame my job. That's my fault. So we just had a really good laugh about it. And I just said I was sorry. And, and he he was like, so how did you remember? Like what prompted the memory? I was like, my aunt texted me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cool that he's not like he's not angry you. about it or whatever. Like, I he tell just, you. I'm I'm married to an, uh, another person who is not a remember my dates, you know, buy me stuff kind of person, and it is my savior. You know, like I yeah. uh, we we came through our anniversary last year, and neither of us gave each other anything. So it's just it's kind of like we're not built that way. Thankfully, either one of us, because yeah. if one of us was. Yeah. It would be rough. Well, that's the thing is I'm not that way. If he forgot something, it, it really wouldn't bother me either. I'm an so. everyday guy. Like I'm a, you know, celebrate it when you think it, when you feel <laughs> it kind of guy. I'm a birthday everyday person. For sure. <laughs> Give no, me like presents You celebrate every day. the people in your life when you think about them. Or, With or, presents. <laughs> well, With gifts. Well, see, that's the thing. Neither of us are gifts people. Like gifts don't mean anything to us. It's Buy just me a, something. It's a waste of money. It so. means you love me. <laughs> Hey, Jonathan, I fixed it all. guess what? what I did? Um, I maybe fractured my foot. Yay! Oh, no. How was I going to guess that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you weren't. How did you do that, though? I don't I don't know. Maybe I, I'm, I was stepping on a step and only part of my foot actually hit the step. And so then when I put my body weight to bring the rest of me onto the... Uh, it crumpled. Hmm. And I, I definitely heard pops and snaps. Yeah, it's weird because I can technically walk on it. I can put pressure on it, and there's certain th- ways to move that don't hurt at all. But it is it hurt it, like it hurts all the time. But it's not like it, it's not like the kind of pain that when I when did this happen think yesterday or start hurting yesterday. I, oh yeah. <laughs> well, my mom she Wait. she had a a break in her foot that was so so small that mm-hmm. like it, she could totally walk on it. But then when they took an x-ray, they saw that it was all these little spider fractures. And so then she had to like mm-hmm. wear a boot for a while while he healed. And so then here I am going, well, maybe I did break something, but I can still use it. So how long do I go before I go to the doctor? Because I am a avoid the doctor until you're on death's door person. Yeah, I would just I would just go get an x-ray. There's no reason not to. And there's no, from what I understand, there's not a whole lot they can do about it other right. than like put you in a boot, right. tape you up, something. Right. So why don't I just wear my I, own boots? I'm wearing boots today, you know? I mean, if you had a friend, like if you lived here, my wife would totally hook you up with a boot. Um, oh. if, you, if you had a friend that was an orthodist or knew an orthodist, you could probably, uh, you know. But if it ends up being something more serious. I, I thought you were going to I thought you were gonna say that you were going to totally hook me up with an x-ray machine. And I was like, <laughs> sweet, man. <laughs> 
No, my wife is a. I didn't know if you know that she's a prosthetist orthodist. She can. She uh, she fits people with like orthotics. And stuff, Did we so. all of a sudden cool. start talking about dinosaurs? What are these words you're saying? Orthodist. <laughs> I swear, Alan Grant was looking for the prosthetist dorstedist on uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Are you guys scared as scared as I am about the coronavirus? I'm like nope. terrified. Nope, not at all. And I, N- not like, I don't want to leave my house. Well, I mean, what's <laughs> what are you scared you're going to catch it? I don't know. I don't know. Just uh because that's... Just stuff like that just uh, I, it's it's a ridiculous fear, but I have a lot of ridiculous well, no. fears. This is like one of the least ridiculous fears I have. <laughs> There's not uh, just diseases in general just freak me out so there's nothing wrong with fearing outbreak like outbreak is a legit thing yeah. that could take us all out the, the difference with the coronavirus is it is definitely one of the most uh, aggressive epidemics that we've seen uh ever like if you watch the graph compared mm-hmm. to other things like bird flu or those kind of things that have come and gone or ebola or whatever the case might be um it's crazy aggressive but i mean from what i understand it's fairly easily treatable and is actually not that rough to go i mean it's like you should be just as worried about the flu as you are about coronavirus it's I, you know i yeah. i just want to say i understand because when i was pregnant i traveled to florida and hundreds of miles away in a city far 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 away the zika virus mm-hmm. had had just landed and and so but while, that had more while, drastic impacts on pregnancy while i was in florida close ish I wore long sleeve shirts, long I wore pants. I like completely tried to cover myself so that whenever mm-hmm. I was outside, I, I I like I went and got um all natural uh, bug repellent and just sprayed myself every time mm-hmm. I was going outside cuz I was super freaked out and there was like this whole Zika thing going on and people at the conference were like you're really pregnant. What are you doing in Florida? And I'm like, stop it. Oh, it no. took me. Yeah, that's a good thing to say. It was so scary to go to Florida. That was one of the scariest <laughs> things I've ever done. You're like, couldn't you just be, couldn't you just call me fat? Like I would have preferred that <laughs> over. Just say I'm going to pop. <laughs> um, no, you, did, you didn't like lick any desks while you were there? No, I take no, it. Okay. no. Okay. Hmm, you guys are missing out on the desk licking. No, Aaron, <laughs> you very much have said that that was a dumb thing. It Don't was, even play. Listen, I'm glad I went through it. <laughs> You know, life teaches you things. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I think because they were shutting down like major business, like, you know, major money making things like film productions and stuff like that. It's just, and it's probably because we have more media now, too. So we hear about that stuff. Yeah. More than we did like 20 years ago. But I guess that's where I started getting like, man, they're really like just like shutting the country down. <laughs> Yep. Well, Mike Pence is is here to save the day, so we're all going to be fine. Uh, I had an Independence Day meal with one of my children this week. That's not what? the Fourth of July, dude. I know. Uh, Independence Day meal for us is when uh, our children are like, "I'm moving out." Oh snap! You mean to leave the nest? Yeah. Meal? yeah. Is, is this the oldest? No, I take it. No, it's the out. youngest. He's, <laughs> yes, he's only fourteen. <laughs> He's 15, by the way, and has a driver's um, permit. It's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, no, uh, my second oldest, who is 19, ah. um, he's uh, moving in with some friends. And uh, so we took him out to lunch and talked about adulting stuff and, you know, making sure he's ready. And he seems to have a good plan. How far so. away from you is he going to be? Not far. 10 minutes. So yeah. he's kind of feeling his independence. And that's like. It's a big day. That's that's the goal, right? It's a big day. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... he's going to realize quickly he hates roommates. Although you've got a big household. <laughs> well, so he already lives with roommates. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Like, he lives he... with a brother in his room roommates. Yeah, he's going to have his he's own. He's going to love having freedom. I he's going to have his own room for the first time in his life. So, yeah, nice. He's going to do what I did, which is the room that you live in. Don't say in that. Don't is, say that, Danae. Is, what? What did I do that's so jacked? You, I guess you know so many of my I stories. I know a lot of your stories from when you were finding your independence. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't recommend some of the choices I made. But right. I'm thinking right. That's of all this, I'm saying. I'm thinking of this one particular house. Now, just, this is the house I'm just that saying I <laughs> This time of their life, if you could, uh, you know, abstain from the, they're going to be just like me. <laughs> just, oh, no. You should, you should go give his son some tips, Danae. Uh, yeah. First, don't move with the mice in your home like yeah. don't take them with you <laughs> check, oh, that's check all your boxes <laughs> yeah. so you don't move a um, mom buy, and baby go buy a used desk and lick it yes, yes. of yeah. course that'll help so wait so you accidentally packed mice <laughs> <laughs> that's just kind of now hitting me in that house when i finally got around to unpacking some stuff i had this uh big trash it was a pink plastic 
trash can that was actually meant to be uh, like a laundry basket, but it was like the, it was looked like a big, tall pink trash can, um, solid plastic. And it was filled with my shoes. I just put all my shoes in there, put them in my car and moved to the next place. And then my favorite shoes were on top. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go through and get all my shoes out. So I start to get all my shoes. And when I get towards the bottom, I had these um, cork wedge shoes so they were you know they were wedge and and they're made of cork and they had is that why they call them cork wedge shoes Uh, uh, shut up (laughs) i'm I'm trying to describe them for anyone who doesn't understand fashion (laughs) doesn't understand the words you just said fucking you can you explain what a velcro tennis shoe is now you know what i just i think i'm done um, the mouse had burrowed into the cork Uh uh-huh oh you were freaking me out (laughs) Of the shoe and made a home and had babies. Oh, no. No. And so it was a, it was a, this frantic mouse and these tiny pink babies. Aww. So, of course. Oh, my God. This is like an urban legend. No. This is true. This is true. Oh, no. It gets. Oh, my God. I, oh I don't know where God. to stop the story because the story goes on and it gets pretty crazy and, and it gets As wild. As if it's not no, crazy I just, enough. I just don't like mice. I, we had our, our old house. Then I should stop. Uh, we- <laughs> So, so you've man. got the uh, the the little old mousy that lived in the shoe. Yeah, had for so real. many children, she didn't know what to do. What happened next? That's just terrifying. Well, the the joke then became that because I was I was such a messy person at that time. I I didn't have at any at that time. I, I'm much better, dude. <laughs> what the hell? I'm sorry. Do for you... whatever reason today, I, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking trying to shit give you... up to throw at you. Right yeah, no, now. no, no, no. I'm trying. These I, like... are pins. They have pokey edges. This is gonna hit you in the Listen, face, man. Fair. You do this to Aaron every week. I was gonna so. say, I, for whatever reason, this week I'm giving it back. You know, <laughs> uh-huh. so I'll stop uh-huh. if it's if it's getting to you. No, I'll, no, I'll stop. No, no, no you are fine. a lot cleaner no. than you used to be. That is for sure. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Anyhow, continue. Tell us no, about no. the mice family. No, I, I think that's a good place to stop the okay. story because it gets gross and it gets weird and it gets fun. It, there's a great story. Listen, send your Does request. She eat her babies. Send your request to uh, hear the rest of the story to what's the rest of the story <laughs> at <Nice>. gmail. <laughs> no, at cinemasins.com. By the way, we did get lots of emails. Not lots. I got one. I got two, technically. Yeah. Did you get emails? I got an email to, uh, yeah, email suggestions at <laughs> cinemasins.com. <laughs> they suggested fascinating at cinemasins.com. I got one uh, from, you, you, you guys are going to love this. Hold on a second. I got one from JW2. Here's your dang review, Danae, at cinemasins.com. <laughs> 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 Except that one doesn't exist. No, I made it. Oh, you did? Because someone tweeted. We didn't even talk about that in the show. Yeah, we did. No, that one's not in the show anywhere. Really? Yeah, that's what he just made that up as a joke. Well, it And then you made now. it. So oh. now people are making Dang up it. joke emails on Twitter. Dang it. <laughs> He, he, they sent a screenshot of their review of us because we're asking for the iTunes to actually leave yeah. a physical yeah. written review, yeah. not just the wonderful stars that you guys have been giving. So let me so. make sure I understand this email that it actually exists now is here's your dang review, Danae, at, at cinemasins.com. Cinemasins. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. And you got which one? You got an email suggestion? Email suggestions at <laughs> cinemasins.com. Yes. <laughs> which technically, technically, he should have gone through that email first to get the here's your dang review email. Oh my God. <laughs> We are creating such a nightmare for ourselves. Uh, hey, like, Jonathan, if you want any obscure email to send to you, you just tell me, man. We'll yeah. make it happen. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Okay, okay, I'm good at cinemasins.com. Okay, I'm goes making to, it for you now. Goes to Jonathan. All right, you now have I'm good at cinemasins.com. <laughs> And what was the one that oh I needed goodness. to make for myself? Next week, Danae has no longer admin, has no more admin <laughs> I know. abilities. I'm, I'm minutes, I'm minutes away. It's like, Chris is like, where did this bill come from? <laughs> from <laughs> we or, find- What did this cease and desist order come <laughs> we, from Gmail? We find out each of these custom emails is costing us $100. <laughs> <laughs> we have this bill for $10,000 a month. What's going on? I don't know. I just started making A at cinemasins.com. Listen, Chris, B at Cinemasins. if you have a problem, just send an email to what's going on with the cost of our emails at cinemasins.com. <laughs> <laughs>